Sonny. Joey. Five double low. Got some goats in the face. Get ready for a shakedown. Prepare for a shakedown. We from Philly where they clap like huddles when they break down. Get ready for a shakedown. We underdogs. My guy kind of used to all the hate now. Prepare for a man. Y'all get it. My QB got swag. My wideout is award winning. This fly goes fly. Joey and 5 double O. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Here's a quote you can sing back. Shake squad up. And don't be a ding back. It's a shakedown. Don't you frown. It's a shakedown. Let's go. Yo, by the way, Kate Dick by here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Philly Shakedown Podcast special Saturday edition as Ooh. we're day three of the Combine. Joey, my man, what is happening? How you doing? I'm good, man. Uh, we're getting through the, yeah, we're getting through the second to last day of the Combine. And, um, you know, we'll see uh, some of the running backs today. Talk about that and some other Eagles news that I think is real interesting to talk about as well. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, what What's going on, everybody? My basement MMA, what's up? Jadis Young, what's up? Uh, Twits, what's going on? Chaos Theory, Teresa, David, Kyle, Robert, Rosie Barnett, um, Luke, Youngin, Ramal. Uh, thank you, guys. Punjab, thank you guys for being here. James, uh, J, JM, what's up? Mm. Uh, Chris Scott, member for 30 months. Thank you so much for the support. Eagles draft 22 uh, center uh, or Cooper Dijon. Dijon. Yeah, cornerback 50, uh, M. Corley wide receiver, Trotter Jr., and Dorla's edge. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we got a lot to talk about because I tell you what, like, I don't know, Joey. Like, I, I really like some of these corners, man. I, I kind of like Arnold. You know, I, I like, I like, I like the guys I've seen, man. I think some of these corners could be perfect for us you know yeah and i think maybe maybe depending on like with these injuries and you know our teams are gonna have to check on you know mckinstry on the you know on the on the you know the the broken pinky toe on his foot and stuff like that um you know someone i think someone's gonna be available at 22 i don't think all these guys are gonna get at least the maybe four or five guys i think you know maybe nate wiggins we'll, we'll see what happens but there's gonna be a lot I available mean, i mean wiggins ran really really great combine numbers yesterday mm -hmm. you know i yeah i mean you know if, if you take and you look at what the eagles normally do they normally go to defensive line here this is like a total defensive line pick but i i just like when you look like you know at least going through some of the mock drafts it just seems like by the time the eagles pick at 22 you're you're, you're already talking like like three four uh defensive edge rushers off the board yeah well you know what I mean? here's the thing though because i'm starting to connect the dots a little bit i i hope it and look i'm not against it or anything but the rumor is of today three out of four of the unofficial visits that are rumored for the eagles right now three of them are offensive linemen mm -hmm. okay now you still have a lot more visits obviously but Will they go down that 2021 route where it was a defensive draft and they go an offensive player? Like they go the total opposite, how he's right. thinking he's the smartest man in the room in that regard? Right. Maybe. Yeah, well, you know, how, how he likes to do that. You know, like if, if you go, if you're getting a bunch of defensive players off the board and the best offensive players or some of them are there, he's going to definitely, he's going to, that's totally typically Howie Roseman, you know? <laughs> The only problem is he did, he just drafted he dressed the wrong guy you know um, but yeah I mean it, it's so it, it, it's so it's like you said yesterday it's so hard to know because we're sitting here literally um, not free agency hasn't even started yet so it's like it's so hard to figure out where they want to go right. exactly the draft you know but I I have no idea I also think that there's really a good chance they they uh, trade up. If you look at some of these mocks, and we'll see how they shake because mm -hmm. these mocks change week to week. But uh, you know, some of those corners will be available in, in the teams oh, draft. Yeah. You know, but it seems like some of these ends, like a lot of these ends, like people are talking about verse and 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 other guys. It looks like a lot of those guys are off the board by the time they pick. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because every time we feel like somebody's gonna go, like we feel like. 
there's always guys drop like barely dropping like we're running out of options <laughs> as I know, but the Eagles I know. have gotten lucky the Eagles have gotten really lucky they've they've moved up every year but even they moved up for Jalen Carr they only moved up a spot you know what I mean just to be right. I think they moved up as like a like a, a safety policy they 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 moved up like as for assurance that you know that nobody was going to get him um you know so We'll see. They moved up like a, what two one or two spots for Devontae Smith as well. Yeah, to block the Giants from getting him. Could you imagine if the Giants had Devontae Smith? <sighs> I would be so pissed off right now. I would be miserable. You know, it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting though. Isaiah says, uh, "Sign Xavier McKinney." I I I like I like the guy. I I definitely like him. I. Safety's in high regard right now. So, I mean, for right. right now, like the rumor is that the Eagles have a lot of interest in the safety market right now. I think, I don't think they're drafting a top safety this year. I think no. they're going to get a free agent, no, no. doubt. And, and of course, the, there's a real, like the buzz that they, they're saying, like the buzz at the combine is that they think the Eagles are going to bring back CJ Gardner Johnson, which I absolutely love i think that was the big mistake we made last year defensively mm -hmm. you you need his at like 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 i saw a tweet and i and i wish i remember who who tweeted this but it was like they were showing the 49ers game and they were showing that the you know when bradbury was getting picked on and nobody was coming to his aid you know it was all these 49ers like bumping and, and like pushing them around they're like that would not happen with cj garner johnson on the roster mm -mm. And, no. and it's like that's what you need. That's really what you were missing, man. Uh, I, I think C.J. Gardner Johnson, to me, I that's who I would target on on defense. I I just I, yeah. I, he's not perfect, but I I like I just I like I like his fit for our team. Yeah, he uh so yeah, the rumor is right now is that around the combine everyone's starting to believe Tony Pauline put out the report that yep. um around the league people think that the, you know Chauncey will sign with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um yep. and he will be a cash bargain too because he was out with an injury last year for most of the season. So uh, this just this goes up up Howie's, you know, alley pretty much when it comes to cost effective type players. Um go you can read that. We'll get into more safety yeah. stuff. I, I mean, I mean, I, I'd make the argument that, like, in, in some ways, I think he was a bigger loss than um, than than Hargrave. One hundred percent. At least you replaced Hargrave with a top prospect. You didn't do anything to to get uh to fix uh, mm -hmm. what's his face. You know, uh, radiation bots. Thank you uh so much uh for the super chat, my man. He goes, uh, does the uh, CJ rumors have credence? Well, Tony Pauline's pretty good. I mean, pretty reputable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I think, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you never really know until the money is really being offered. But the buzz is that the Eagles are interested and want to get them. Now you can get another team could sweep in and offer them big money. You know, a lot of crazy things can happen. But I think the acknowledgement that the Eagles are after him really tells you that they think they made a mistake there. Well, the difference is the Eagles have more breathing room now with the cap space they're going to have. So it's all oh, if I, oh, if I sign this guy, I don't know if I could sign that. You know, you have to pick and choose a little bit. Like now, you have a little bit more breathing room to say, hey, like, you know, we can go all in here and fill up some spots on our defense. Now, there's a lot of veteran safeties that are available, especially via trade and free agency. So a lot of 30, 28 to 30 year old safeties are available for this team if that's the direction they want to go. Right. Um, you know, I heard Ju uh, Justin Simmons. Uh, that's been going around the combine as well, that there is a rumored um, yeah. the Eagles. The Eagles have interest in trading for Justin Simmons. Obviously, the Fangio, Justin Simmons, Denver Broncos connection. That just makes sense. Right. So, yeah, you know, you have to it's a, it's a little bit of an eye opener. But Justin Simmons is about 18 against the cap. You know, obviously, they need to free up 16 to 19 million. The Broncos are like over the cap 16 to 19 million. And obviously, the Russell Wilson contract is probably not helping them at this point no. um so so i think so i think going forward like if if fangio thinks that justin simmons can be a guy that's better than what's out there you know unless right. he doesn't want to come back here i don't know then maybe they do something like that i would like them to go a little bit younger maybe tracy walker at 28 coming from the lions you know eddie jackson hasn't been great in a while except no. fangio with the bears so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of players out there it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, my thing is this. I, I think 
especially when it comes to the safety position, man. What, what is up? Uh, I mean, Justin Sim is 30 years old. I don't Do we really need another 30 year old safety? Like, I'm tired of it. Like, let's just get, <laughs> let's just pay the extra money and get a guy, you know, that's got four more years on the, you know, what I mean, before they even hit 30. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just tired of like going the cheap route at safety. It, I know it, it, it's killed us. We locked out with Malcolm Jenkins. All right. But these guys aren't Malcolm Jenkins. No. All right. They're just not. So I'd rather go a CJ Gardner Johnson in his 20s. Uh, I'd rather go Xavier McKinney, you know, somebody like I, I want to go young, you know. Uh, AB3 says, uh, I want CJ Gardner Johnson. We need him to play in his attitude. His attitude it, it was a huge miss. Yeah. Uh, last year. Hey, look, I Roseman is here. What is going on, Howie <laughs> Roseman? Hey, F- thank you for Super Dave. Hey, can you unblock me? Uh, unblock you? Well, are you on Joe? Is he on your channel doing that? Uh, I don't think so. I like when people say, hey, Philly, can you unblock me? No, he's literally on my channel asking to be unblocked. Dude, you, you're you not blocked or I wouldn't be able to read this. It wouldn't have showed up. Mm-hmm. You, you're not blocked, my friend. He, he's on my channel asking me to unblock him. But if he was blocked, I wouldn't be able to see him. You know what I mean? Right. Luke Bradshaw, favorite super chat. He goes, what up, guys? Time to bring back CJ. I agree. Draft Mitchell. I like him. Yeah. Cornerback from Toledo. Trotter or Cooper. And a wide receiver in a second. McConkie mm. or Worthy is perfect. I like it. I mean, I, I definitely like it. You know, the one thing I'm starting to wonder, though, is, like, I look at these running backs. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure, like, I'm not saying that they're bad running backs. There's some good running backs out there, but I don't know, man. When you look at the free agency market and the amount of talent at running back, and then you look at what's in the draft, I almost rather go free agency, Joey. You know, oh, there's, there's, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, if the Eagles didn't have much money, then I would say, you know, don't, don't hit the free agent market, but there's too much, there's too much talent. I mean, you need, do you really want to produce somebody right now? Or are you, are you ready for this offense to go off the bar right now? And, you know, you're good trying to get a Super Bowl this year. You know what I mean? Like, I think, right. I think they have to go all out at running back and just pay somebody. And they need two of them. Even if you sign one guy, and I don't know if they're trying to get a power guy and more of a dual threat guy. They want like a miss, uh, a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a mismatch of guys, a mix and match of guys. I don't know. Um, I haven't been thoroughly like, oh my God, about these running backs in this draft no. too much. No. Um, because I feel like there's too much on the market that th- there's there's way too much there that they can get. Yeah. So yeah, I, it, you know, like I said, when when you're this far away from the draft, it, everything is is so hard to really project. But um, I think they're probably decent running backs. But I mean, I don't think they, I don't think it's anything like last year where you're talking about John Robinson and. And Jamar Gibbs, uh, you don't have that talent. We saw but, it with B. John. We we saw it. You know, we, oh. we told everybody. We told yeah. everybody. Yeah, you know? and and let me tell you, I I thoroughly believe if if he was if Jalen Carter was not mm-hmm. on that board, I I thoroughly believe they were taking him. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. Um, and and he's going to be a great player, but I don't know that you have that running back. But if you look at free agency, I mean, dude, if you just spend a little more money. You you could get a really good running back. You could get you could bring back DeAndre Swift. I know. You know. Uh Tordyville says all out at running back better not be Tony Pollard. No, no Tony Pollard. I I do not want Tony Pollard. All right. I do not. If Kelmore brings him here, then more needs to go sooner or later. Agreed. I agree. I yeah, don't we'll I don't see. want him. It's a possibility, him. but I, I know. know. But he's not, he stinks. I, I'm sorry. I, I I think he was complimentary of Zeke, and that was before his injury. But mm-hmm. I mean, you watch him last year; he, he was ineffective. I I don't want him, dude. I don't. Want I get him. it. You know, uh, LJ says sign Frankie Luvu and Jordan Brooks, and the linebacker position is fixed. Draft is weak at the position. Lots of good linebackers are free agency, though. Kind of like that in uh with the running backs as well. I mean, the running back, I don't think I've ever seen a free agent uh, running back group as talented as what we got here. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a deep free agency class at running back. Mm-hmm. Um, draft wise, I don't know. I don't think I don't think we need. I I honestly would lean towards just free agency addressing the running back, and then really focusing on you know the other positions in the draft. Yeah, there's way too much. Like, if you want to bring in some of your own, like I said, like DeAndre Swift, like he was just here last year. Like, how much does he really command? Like, well, we went through this whole thing yesterday on how much these running backs are commanding. We know that's not a high, you know, there's no promise towards how much they're going to get paid. They're not getting paid over $10 million, maybe 10 or, like you said, 10 or less from what Adam Schefter said. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't see that market being strong for a running back. It's not going to be a strong no. market. No. It's, it's a devalued position, and it's going to continue to be for at least a while longer. So I think, I mean, you know, Howie Roseman, when he feels like something's a bargain, he'll do it. So that's what we have to watch um, in terms of running back. I think if you if you said to me, all right, you have to bet, who do you think the Eagles are bringing in at running back? Not that This is not who I want, but I think Austin Eckler is the guy you got to watch out for. Because we we have heard that the Eagles have liked him in the past. Kellen Moore was with him last year. I do not want him. How old is he now? I don't know. I I have to check. check. But but I mean I I I I don't think he's bad. But but there's guys I rather get. Like I rather bring Swift back. You know I don't know, man. I really like the idea of the whole Swift Henry thing, man. Like I could get by that. You know I could get into that. You know, AB3 says, no matter who's on this team, we need to play with heart and creativity, creative play calling, as well as playing a win. Oh, I agree. You know, and and I think hopefully with the new coordinators, we'll see that. We'll see better creativity in plays, better play calls. And I think the players will stay more engaged because I think the players didn't believe in the play calling. And I think that right. started all the checkout, you know. He's 28, by the way. 28. Eh, ain't bad. But, you know, I, I to me, I, I don't hate Austin Eckler, but. Swift is I, 25. I, what's that? <laughs> Swift is 25. <laughs> yeah, Swift is 25, and he wasn't overused last year either. Mm-hmm. No, they got Blake Corum on right now, the TV, the running back. He considered, I guess, the top running back prospect. The only thing, he's like 5'8", 5'7", 5'8". Small, yeah. Yeah, but he's like 210 pounds. So, it'll be interesting. Uh, Mr. Rudy Poos' Eckler is 30. Really? Is he? Did I read the wrong thing? Let me see. Let me see what Eckler is. He's 28, May 17th, yeah. 1995. Yeah. He, he might, he might, he might have aged like a 30 year old by now, though. R- running backs, you know, 28 is like 32 at other positions. Uh, I'd rather keep Swift over Eckler. Me too. Man, I would love to. He's not, and Eckler's not more, and Eckler is, is, He's a great he's, out of the field. He, he's good. Him. Like he's good, but I don't think he's at he's not close to being athletic as Swift is. He's he's really good catching. He's really good receiver out of the backfield. I mean, he does a lot of good things. I, I don't hate all Eckler. I just for the what money wise and stuff, I would rather get I'd rather bring Swift back. Mm-hmm. Man, it's a, it's amazing, man. You know, as little as they use Swift. Man, he still had over a thousand yards. You know, it's crazy. Um, Fabio, they were super chat. He goes, McCaffrey is a lower version of Westbrook. Christian McCaffrey? Hmm. McCaffrey's pretty damn good, man. I mean, I mean, he was legitimately a M- almost one of MVP. Yes, get get Johnson back is Deion's. I agree. I agree. Uh, Max Tate looks great. Philly watch. I will definitely check him out. Uh, I would definitely check him out. Benson might go undrafted. Hmm. See, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. It's good. It's going to be interesting. I still think, I still think we're going to see heavy presence on defense in this draft early. 
And I think early in free agency, well, you know what? That's the surprise. If they go heavy defense, right? If they go heavy defense, especially in the draft, if that's their plan, <laughs> uh, is it possible they throw some money on offense? I mean, where did they throw most of their money last year? They, um, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, they got Bradbury. They re-signed Bradbury. They re-signed Slay. They used the first-round pick on a defensive tackle. I mean, dude, if you think about all the resources we put at defense, we've got little to show for it. I mean, we're overpaying guys 30 years old. We're paying them tons of money. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, most of the money is going to come from the defense. But, I I mean, I, I think there's got to be a – like, I don't, I don't know if they want to produce a wide receiver three. I, I feel like they – with the money that they have, and I don't think they have to spend a lot offensively. Like, I might have to spend a few bucks here and there, but I don't think it's going to be anything high-priced for a running back. It's not going to be high-priced for – a wide receiver three will be interesting which route they go. I you know, I think there will be guys available. Um, and there is up to Kellen Moore. That he, does he want somebody more proven? Or does he want to go into the draft and, and produce a guy, maybe get someone in the second round? I, I don't know. but Yeah, I don't know. It's good. It'd be interesting. <clears throat> Luke of Hazard, they were super chat, my man. He goes, what up, fellas? Hope all is well. Anyone you like Philly making trade up for? Uh, I like Arnold Latu and Edric Cooper so far. Trade wise, um, I I think I think if you want to secure one of those one of those corners like like Arnold or Latu Latu. Although I saw a, a mock draft where they had Latu Latu going like I think it was like seven or eight. Yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, if he goes that that early. But yeah, I I would agree. I would agree with those guys. You know, I think Cooper. I don't think Cooper's going in the first round. So I, I don't think you need to worry about him in the first round. The question is, is will they take will they take one of those second round picks and try to make a huge jump up in the first? What if you took your first and your second? How far can you get up into the draft? Could you get into the top twelve? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a little steep, you know? but maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Toyville says, I think we get a couple pieces on offense because our best chance to win next year will be high-scoring games. This defense is two years plus away from being rebuilt. That's my thoughts, too. Similar to kind of like last year, like like draft and get young defensive players that you might need to develop and then take advantage. And we did, you know, we it was the same philosophy last year, but they really didn't do it. Um, and then, you know, let your offense carry you. Your offense mm-hmm. is where you, all your talent is. Um, I like that idea, to be honest. Uh, Mr. Rudy put David Super Chat. He goes, we better not draft a backup at number 22. That means offensive line or a defensive line. We better get us a starter at cornerback safety linebacker. We have too many holes to take a luxury pick. I would love to see. Well, well here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. And thank you for Super Chat. I don't – if the best player available is is an offensive lineman, I think because you don't have the luxury, I think you got to take the, the most talented player. Now, I don't think it will work out that way. I think, I think you know, like a cornerback is like a perfect situation where I think there are corners like Arnold and stuff that you could literally draft and probably start day one. And that's what I want. That's what I want them to do. You know. Yeah, I mean, corn- but yeah. I'm not. Over, but I'm not passing up on talent. I'm just not. No, you can. Yeah, like you can't. They can't be picky. Like luxury is luxury, but like you got to take the best guy on the board. Like we're, <laughs> I, I, it's gonna be tough. Like I know you want to take an edge rusher, but he's gonna be more rotation behind. You take Latu, just save Latu drops, and you take him. You know, but just because he's in, buy, it's it's more of a you. You can't look at it just for this year. You have to look at it for down the road. That's what I'm saying. Like if you take Latu, oh, he's a rotational guy. He's luxury. It's not luxury because it's gonna be holes there after this year. And especially if we don't even know what's happening with Reddick. If Reddick's not even here at this point, then it won't be luxury. But if Reddick, you know, if Reddick is if Reddick, you know, is here and they draft Latu, then you know, Sweat's gonna be gone. BG's not even here. You know, so. It's just best town available, dude. Best on the board. Got to do yeah. it. Yeah. Can't, can't I, I, be I mean, picky that way. 
Can't I, do I don't. I don't think. I don't think it'll work out. Offensive lineman is the best player available at the time. I think it'll be corner. I. I think. I really think those. I like some of these. Like man, I like. I like these corners. Kid from Toledo, man. Uh, I was watching. You know, in, in drills, he's very smooth. Arnold had a bad forty time, but man, he can play though. You know, I don't really. I think. I think the forty sometimes is. You know, forty speed and then game speed are two different things. You know, mm-hmm. but I like that kid Arnold, man. I like some of these corners that are coming out. I yeah, really Quinn, do. Quinn Mitchell's looking really good. He had the uh, fastest. He had the fastest back pedal, I think, for two reps. He had the fastest back pedal. He, I think. he also, he also, I think, did the most reps at two twenty five. I think he did twenty. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And he's, you know, he. he I like so, that kid a lot. So yeah, I would like, trade up for him. So if like a Tyler Guyton offensive lineman was there and you had one of these, you had to pick and choose out of these four cornerbacks, like are you picking offensive line over one of these four corners or are you picking corner? How much of a how much of a difference in terms of where I look at them talent wise? Well like what's the gap talent wise? You're te- you're all right, so you're choosing between the best, the best offensive tackle in the draft and on a top and one of the top top corners a top four talent that's in the draft right now they could start right now well i so so i'm saying that that you're saying that would you best at their positions but overall who's got the higher upside yeah like I, our, yeah like our, like i'm saying this i'm saying are you going to take like the best would you take the best offensive lineman out of all the out of Wiggins, Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, would you take the best offensive lineman over those few guys? McKinstry and some of those other guys. I, I need to do more research on the alignment to tell you for sure. Okay. But most likely I would go corner. Okay. You know, sorry um, I made that confusing, but um, but you know, like like if you're telling me like, you know, here's a here's a tackle that a right tackle that now, see, right t- tackle, you don't really need, though. So I probably have to, because I think the talent is similar in terms of ceiling, I would go corner. I would go corner. Like, I I like the idea of this, of Mitchell. Like, like I would trade up to, like, 15, 16 for him. He, you get him, you start him right away. See, and, and it's like what Tordeville was saying earlier. You, you, you get the young defensive players, you plug them in, you let them play and learn. And you let your offense carry you. So go spend money and get Derrick Henry and Swift and have an unbelievable offense. And then let the young defensive players over the next few years, let them develop into to the role, you know. And then when, you know, you have to start shifting things around, your defense will be ready to go. I, I, I like that idea a lot. I mean, we talked right. about that last year, but they didn't do it because they went out and they re- brought back Slay. They right. brought back Bradbury. Mm-hmm. They brought these guys back. But that's exactly what we were talking about. Remember, like, if Carter's not there, it was like, if Carter's not there, Will Anderson not there. Remember, we were like, Will Anderson, Carter off the board, we're going we're going, uh, Bajon. And mm-hmm. then we're going to let our offense carry us until the defense <clears throat> catches up with young talent. Right. They didn't do that, though, you know. But I like the idea of that, though. I mean, I, I think I think that's the best way to handle it. Um, Mr. Rudy Poot, thank you for the super chat. He goes, if Deshaun, Arnold, Kool-Aid, Wiggins, Mitchell are all there at 22, we better take one. It would be irresponsible to take Guyton, who is a project. You see, it's a project. Yeah, that's the thing. I think the question is, is who's the best out of those corners? Because I like them all. I, yeah. I like Arnold really impressed me yesterday. Um Solid Even day. though I know people were saying, I think he ran like a four six. His forty time was horrible, but I mean, when you look at the tape and you and you watch him, I think he's a, I think he's going to be good. But Mitchell, man, Mitchell to me mm-hmm. is like, a, you know, he might not. I I don't want to say I don't want to throw big names out there, but I I think he's got a lot of talent. We'll put it that way. Okay. Yeah. You know. I the the thing I and I I forget and I'm sorry whoever <laughs> said it earlier the thing with 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 if you got one of those corners I believe they could start right let's say you got Mitchell right mm-hmm. you get Mitchell you start him now you 
you Bradbury's gone after post June first, or, or let's say however they do it. Now you have Slay for one year or whatever, and then Ringo comes right in. Mm-hmm. Now you have Ringo and this kid. Let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have you have. I think the Eagles. I said this the other day. I said the Eagles, if they hit on corner in the first round, and then Slay leaves after he's got two years left, and if he leaves after this year, okay. Um, you have the best depth at cornerback, and you have guys that have, you know, obviously we didn't have the right defensive coordinators that put them in good positions, but Eli Ricks flashed. Not not enough, obviously, but he flashed. And Keely Ringo, I thought, played really two strong games under Matt Patricia. Those two games were like, damn, he's he's getting there. He's doing his thing. So, I mean, there's, there's good promise, but they just need more time. I think they have perfect depth with Isaiah Rodgers coming in. I think there's a lot of good depth. Um, at corner right now to keep in camp um, for the competition uh, this off season. And if they put a, you know, a number one corner into the fold for the future, then great. You know what I mean? You pair them up with Slay right. for the year, you know? So I, I feel really good about it. It's, it's, it sucks because I really want them to go corner first round. And I just feel like they're not going to go in that direction. I just don't feel like they're going to go that way. I hope yeah. it changes. If one of those guys drops, dude, like, it's hard for me not to take. It's hard for me not to take one of them, especially if well, if look if Bradbury's cut. Like, well, the thing is, we're not going to know if Bradbury. So, if Bradbury's going to be on the roster, and there's no rumors coming out that he's leaving. We're all going to think he's going to be here, and everyone, we're all going to be flipping out. Like, I can't believe like they're not going to draft one of these guys at 22 or move up for one guy. Um, you know, so I'm hoping. I wish they can get this Bradbury thing done early. This way, we have an indication that we know what they're going to do. But I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rudy Pateva, super chat, my man. He goes, actually, only exceptions is if Latham, Fuaga, Joe Alt, and Fashano are there at 22. Then it's okay to take them, not the other guys. Well, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and that's just a, a talent thing, what you're saying. So, I, I get it. I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, they haven't drafted a cornerback since uh, Lito Shepard. They they haven't. Um, so, the, the, what the Eagles like to do in these situations is they either trade up, they trade back, or they take a lineman, whether it's offense or defensive line. I just think when, like, I was looking at, um, uh, I was looking at the NFL.com. I was looking at some of the mock drafts. I'm telling you, by like 13, 14, there are three, four defensive ends or edge rushers off the board. So why I want to really take the fifth six best edge rusher no instead of the best you know corner or, or second best corner draft no you know but here's another thing about these mock drafts every time i hear too much of one name or one position going to the eagles i feel like it's the complete opposite so when i hear oh. corner when i hear corner non-stop going to the eagles i feel like it's not going that direction every right. single time like yeah. it's mckinstry or it's uh, the two. It was Quinn. It was Quinn Mitchell and McKinstry. Those yeah. are the two names from the at least in the combine. I'm reading the bottom here because I've seen it the last couple of days. It's been those two guys linked to the Eagles. And when you hear too much of one position, I just I can't. It's always the total opposite. It's, it's no, they yeah. always do something I, I else. I agree. I agree. And 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 I've never seen a team get more defensive backs <laughs> thrown their way or drafted, and they never take them. Well, I think I saw Tordeville. I think it's scrolling up uh, in the chat. But what about wide receiver in the first round? Would that be a surprise? You draft a wide receiver in round one who in the future will replace A.J. Brown once his once Devontae's yeah. contract. Is- that's a, that's another thing. Another thing is another thing is free agency and, and how it dictates where they go. Like if it's looking like, they, right. you know, they'll maybe get another weapon. If maybe everybody gets signed at wide receiver three, and maybe they want to get that, that future guy as their number one. And if, if, if they're not going to hold on to AG Brown anymore, then, you know, we'll see, but that's a, that's a big one. That's a, with the holes you have on defense, that's a big one. As of right now, from what it looks like, cause we haven't been through free agency yet. So <laughs> imagine they go another receiver. Yeah, you don't you don't know, but I, I'm just saying um, it, it's weird because the Eagles they they go long gaps of not p- picking certain certain positions. They just don't do it. And then you know when's the last time? I can't even tell you the last time they took a linebacker in the first round. Like it, it doesn't happen, you know. Mm-mm. 
I don't know. I, I, I mean, dude, I like the idea of going out and get Derrick Henry and Swift both <laughs> in free agency and bringing them in and then saying, all right, we got those guys. And then we'll, you know, then sign like a, a linebacker, a mid tier linebacker, and then turn around and draft early defense. And guys that are going to be plug in and going to play, and then let your offense carry you, dude. I mean, dude, why we're, not? We're in a really good spot. Besides, like a couple positions on offense, we're in a really good spot right now because you have you're going to have a lot of cap, and you're going to have you're going to have the draft compensation. Not only you can go after defensive guys in free agency, but you can go after defensive guys in the draft. Like you could double down and have everything ready. I mean, they can fill almost every spot because your offense is pretty much almost set besides some depth pieces running back. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, see, depending on what Jason Kelsey's doing, like you're pretty much set, dude. Like they yeah. could double down on defense easy. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, here's the thing that, you know, you're, you're paying Bradbury and Slay a, a, a ton of money. Right, and we say that they, they don't use them right all the time, and then we talk about their age and how much money they're getting. The reason why we're paying those guys a lot of money is because we did not draft well in the draft. We did not draft right well. So right. when you don't draft positions well, what happens is how he has to go out and spend money in free agency to hide the fact that they missed on a draft pick. Right. And that's truthfully what happened. And so therefore now, because you're missing on guys and draft picks, you're spending, we, we're paying these guys a lot of money. We got to hit and get like, we got to draft rookie corners that need to come out of our, you know, our system and be with us and play in a rookie contract. Um, I, I really think, I really think the more I think about what Tordeville said earlier, the more I thought about what we talked about last year, I think it applies to this year as well. I think you need to, you might as well shore up your offense. So there's no weaknesses and then spend draft picks early on defense and let those guys play and let your offense carry you. It makes sense. It it, it totally. I think if if Hargrave didn't leave or like, well, he had to, but if Hargrave was still on contract, it probably wouldn't have happened. They wouldn't have had to go out and you know feel like they were pressured to sign Bradbury because Chauncey didn't sign. They signed Bradbury as a panic move. I guess. I mean, we were surprised over it. We didn't think it was going to happen. Um, cause he was going to get a lot of money and he actually took less money to be honest. He would have got paid 15, 16 years. He got paid like 12, 13. Um, you know, so pick and choose man. Cause we want a corner in the building for have him in the building for four to five years. This is, yeah. this is, per, this draft is perfect for it. It's perfect. I mean, if you look, if you look at our cap situation, look at all the guys, right. Besides Jalen hurts, look at all the guys that we're paying the biggest money to, right. A.J. Brown, Hassan Reddick, Darius Slay, James Bradbury's making – I mean, I don't think he's making a ton, but if you look at all the big cap hits, they're all, they're all guys that we had to bring in from somewhere else. And that's because we didn't do well in the draft. So the best way I think to handle it is, is take your offense, make it unstoppable, man. And then go and get younger on defense. Now you still could go out in free agency and get one giant defensive signing. You still could do that. But I think if you go early defense with guys that are actually going to come in and play, I mean, just think about it. In a few years, let's say you draft Mitchell, and in a few years, maybe two years down the road, you've got Ringo and Mitchell are your starting corners. You're not going to be paying them hardly anything. Mm -hmm. You know? I get it. I think they should have did. We talked about this last year. This was the whole this was the whole framework for why we were like, if Will Anderson and, and Carter are not on the board, you go Bajan Robinson. Because, you know, we wanted to be able to get younger in defense and get playmakers in. Instead, we're talking about there we got we we can't trade, we can't get rid of Slay because of contract. Bradbury, we have to wait till post June 1st. Uh we don't even know if Hassan Reddick's gonna be here. And it's all because we're paying them too much money because we didn't hit on our picks. But but then the scheme pisses me off because I feel like 
If you're not playing press, and I've said this every single day, said this yesterday, if you're not playing press, then what is, what is, you know what I mean? Like, why are you putting money into a guy that you're not going to be playing press with? Like, that's, if that's the, the strong, what's the strong suit of a first round corner? It's, it's, it's press, it's man coverage. Like, that's, so how do you go about that with this scheme then? You just get the best, the best guy in the second, third rounds for the best zone guy? I mean, is that what you're, I, I don't yeah, know. I don't know either. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like, I, I don't, I've never understood how they use Slay anyways. If you look at him in the Minnesota game uh, two years ago when he shut down oh, yeah. Justin Jefferson, he, he shattered him, like you said. Like, that's how you should be using Slay, but they don't like to do that. So, you know, th- this goes back to, to the scheme and to the coaching and the responsibility of Fangio to take the talent around him and start molding his defense and what he does according to the talent. And and the coordinators, the coaches that can't do it aren't great coaches, in my opinion. I get it. You know? Yeah, Max is injury prone. I, I agree. Joey's right. Playing weakness instead of uh, strength. Yes, yeah, zone interceptions. Yeah, listen, it, it's one of those things that has confused. There's a lot of things that they do that confuse. Like, why do you have Rashad Penny here and not use him? Why why do you have, like, why do you not use Swift more? Like, why is Swift out on, why do you take Swift out of the game on third down? I I like, like what? Because people say, oh, Gainwell is a better pass blocker, but he stinks at pass blocking. Yeah. So I I don't, I don't get it. You know, I, I, I'm getting really uncomfortable that the scheme is over the players and, and that's what's really annoying me right now. Really annoying. Yeah. Ernst Wall says, uh, that's why we don't need elite corners because of the scheme. Just solid players that can tackle and don't get beat over the top. Yeah, well, you need the right kind of corner. You need corners that can I'll... play like zone coverage, but yeah, but they already paid those guys. They could have let those guys walk last year, both of them. You know, they didn't. They, you know, they could have paid CJ Gardner Johnson and let both those guys walk, and we probably would have been better off. Yeah. Is Calvin Ridley is is Calvin Ridley um is he, he is. is he a free agent? He is. Yeah, it might not be a bad. He had, he had over a thousand yards though. Like, uh, see, he'll yeah, somebody will he'll, pay him. He'll get money. Yeah, that's a problem. John Jones, what's up, my man? He says it's a Howie <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, they cut they cut uh, Kevin Byard and saved thirteen million dollars. But why did they have to go out and get Byard? Because they didn't they didn't do a good enough job. Drafting safeties. This is why you have to draft well. Because when you draft well, then you don't have to go spend as much money in free agency. You know. Yeah. That's that's really the thing. You look at the whole. Like I said, look at the roster. Look at the biggest cap numbers. They're all coming pretty much from guys that we had to bring home from other teams. Bradbury, no, uh, Bayard was let go. Not Brad. Not Bradbury. Yeah, Unless Bradbury was just let go, like right now. But you, you would lose. <clears throat> um, oh, I, I was looking at. It. Yes, let me pull over the cap. Here, actually, let me do it so I can screen share it. But Bradbury's, Bradbury's numbers are a little bit like. I don't know how they're going to cut him. Let me see here. I'm going to pull this up. All right. So let me screen share this. See four against the 4.3 against the cap this year. Who Bradbury? Yeah. He's 4.3 against the cap this year. 25. He's 7.8 against the cap. All right. So let me pull Bradbury here. You get, you see in the screen, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so Bradbury's 4.3 <laughs> against the cap this year. Now, if you were to cut him pre June first, you would put that would put you in a ten million dollar hole. It'd be fifteen million dollars in dead money, and then you'd be in the hole ten million dollars. Now, if you cut him post June first, you're still gonna have you're still gonna lose six million dollars in cap space. So how do you even get rid of him? You extend you extend him a couple of years and you then you cut him. You extend him, you spread out the dead money, 
and this way they'll be in the single digits and you'll just have to eat it up. I mean, if it's in the single digits then you're fine, they're going to have to extend him. For, they're going to have to extend him a couple of years and then cut him. They'll have to use if that. They, loophole. If they could trade him post June 1st, they could, they could save $2.7 million. The hell's going to trade? For him? Nobody, <laughs> nobody. Yeah. They're going to have to restructure him or they're going to have to eat it. But yeah, I mean, Bradbury is, is, uh, it's a bad contract, yeah. dude. It's, it's, it's a bad it's, contract. But look at the, look at these contracts, right? You got Hassan Reddick mm-hmm. from another team. You got Lane and Jalen, they're Eagles. The AJ Brown, another team. Darius Slay, other team. Melata Kelsey, they're Eagles. Avante Max, Avante Max contract's got to go. Yeah, he's got to get out. He's got to go. He's got what? What is he? Nine million dollars. So Avante Maddox, if we if we look at his contract real quick, so if you cut him pre June first, you save one point nine. You cut him June first. Look at after June first, it's seven point one million dollars. Yeah, I, I think Avante Maddox. He's got to go. I think he's got to go, man. I think I think there's he's no way. Out. There's there's no way. I mean, Zach McPhee. I mean, you got two nickel corners. You got two guys coming off AC. I mean, not ACLs. You have you have McPherson coming off an ACL, which he'll still be here. But you know, Maddox like four injuries in a couple of years. You know, well, I think, yeah, I think Rodgers is is kind of gives you an opportunity with Maddox. Yeah, listen, if they could restructure Maddox and keep him, and he wants to stay on the roster, but you know, my hope is that that Rodgers is your is your starting uh, nickel corner. You know, hopefully. Uh, Robert says how he didn't said last year the coaches didn't give the young players enough playing time. They didn't. I, I mean, I think they should have started way earlier, you know. But we, but we need like, we need like. I want one of those corners that you draft and you just put them in and start them day one, you know. Mm. Coaching's going to make this team so much better. It's true. It's true. It, it's going to be. It's really going to be a fascinating um, free agency because the, the, there's so much that that can happen, you know, with this team. True. And if you guys are, are new to the channel or you're just in here, make sure you hit the like button on both channels. Click the link in the description. Go sub up, my man, Joey Shakes. Thank you guys for being here today. Hey guys. Oh, some of the, run, the, the receivers are running now. Cornelius Johnson's running. Um, Xavier Leggett is coming up. I want to see him run because uh, I want to see uh, – they're going to go to commercial. They always go to commercial when I want to I want to see Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey from Georgia is the definitely yeah, one I want to see. Got, Leggett's going, then McCaffrey, uh, and then and then he, then him. So the next three runs are, are interesting. <clears throat> see, yeah, the more I think about it, the more – I don't know what their strategies are going to be. I, I really think if you, if you had to say – if I had to guess one player that I think they're going to go hardcore for um, in free agency, I think it's Van Ginkle. <laughs> I think Van Ginkle is a short game. <laughs> I, I've, I've almost at this point believe he's a Philadelphia Eagle right now. I just feel like it's, it's, it's there. I feel like it's going to happen. Yeah. Do you think they go to commercial? When he, there's no doubt about it. They, they will go to commercial right before the Eagles pick. <laughs> Every year without fail. And then they'll come out and start to announce and have all this like extracurriculars. It's always one we pick. We have younger cornerbacks on the roster who are more durable than Maddox and some have some high upside gamble now. You think you could trade Maddox, Joey? You think you could get something for him? In a trade? Maybe. I mean, but the injury history might turn off teams. That's just that's really the only issue is injury history. I mean, we would keep him if he wasn't if he was more available for us, but you have no depth at at nickel either. I mean, McPherson would have been the backup guy and then he got hurt. So you were you had to rotate. You don't rotate inside corners. You don't rotate. They were rotating guys. You can't do that. How, How many weeks did we have consistent a consistent group? That was together. We barely right. all year. Yeah. No, well, let's face it. We were a mess last year. <laughs> <laughs> we were defensively. We were a mess. Michael Goldberg, thank you for the super chat. I'm gonna let Joey take this one. Do you guys really want Slay as a mentor? 
That's a troll question. <laughs> that's Joey. That's for Joey. No, Joey's about to Joey's about to go to his house and help him move. Are you kidding me? <laughs> go hang out with your wife. Go eat her banana pudding. I don't care what you do. <laughs> fuck, fuck off. Get out of Philadelphia. People hate me for it, but I don't care. Listen, I, 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 I don't. It just it doesn't. It's not a good look. You know, it's not. It's not. It's not a good look. You know, I, and it, it really makes you appreciate the guys that we do draft uh, and why it's important to keep them. Because, I mean, I, I, I swear, I, I know 61, 62 years old, Darius Slade's going to be having nightmares about the Eagle fans. Dude, you're one of the highest paid players on the team. You have a C on your chest, and the, the shit that you say about the fans, wow. like... Leggett ran a 4-7. Four, four, mm. I think he's like 6-3. Luke McCaffrey's Big. running. He runs a four four seven. Now McConkey's up, man. Yeah. Let's see. If McC- they're going to show McConkey. Did he run? Okay. Here's McConkey. Three four 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 three. Mm-hmm. He's fast, dude. He's fast. Ooh. He's not related to Phil McConkey, is he? I don't know. Phil McConkey, I couldn't stand as a giant. Uh, Chris Scott says Van Ginkle being oh, Van Ginkle's already an eagle. I, you know, there's <laughs> never been more sure. VJ, my man, member for 30 months, thank you so much. He goes, What up, gang? Kool Aid or Sertan Jr.? I would listen, Sertan is a great player, but you got to pay him big, big money. And uh, I don't think I don't think Denver's gonna trade him. Uh, Donnie Mitchell's running right now. Four three five, <laughs> dude. <clears throat> what are they feeding these guys? <clears throat> Four three five. See, man, I don't know, man. I'm thinking about this. Oh no! If if you have, oh, dude, it would be ballsy <laughs> to take a receiver in the first round. You know, Donnie Mitchell, six foot four. All right. I want to draft. I'm drafting Donnie Mitchell. I, I'm done. <laughs> Dude just ran a four three. What did I say? A four three four, and he's six foot four. Six two. Six foot. Why they got listed? Six, six two and four? a half. A Donnie Mitchell six two and a half. Why they got they got it listed here? Uh, six four. Okay. <clears throat> so six two, six two one ninety six, four three five. Dude, why not grab him in the first round? Turn around, get a couple running backs, and then just the rest of the draft defense. Now, when AJ Brown, if he goes in a couple years because of contract, you got a guy to go replace him. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? <laughs> Toy was like, Lad McConkey isn't related to Phil. I just checked. Thank <laughs> God. Then 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 I'm on I'm okay with him because Phil McConkey may be. My most hated rival player of all time. He drove me nuts. David, David just simply puts it like, "How he's just going to screw this draft up?" Like isn't Keon? Does. Isn't Keon Coleman? Is he's another big receiver too? Yeah, yeah. I want to see him run. I, a couple of these guys, I wanted to see these big guys run. But man, uh, Diane Mitchell, four three five. Have Crazy. you seen uh, the YouTube rage compilation of you versus? No, I haven't seen it yet. I mean, I remember having them, but I haven't seen like if somebody made it. No, <laughs> I'll have to check it out. We were on stream. We were on stream when he got when he got the two year extension. Oh yeah, remember? that's right. I have that that's on my right. channel. Yeah. Mr. Rudy Poot, thank you for the super chat, my man. He goes, my issue with Slate. Is the same issue uh, Patricia had with him in Detroit. He keeps meat riding opposing players. No competitiveness. Yeah, I I don't like the friendly stuff either. I I don't. I hear you. I hear you with that. Um, Nikki Cunningham, what's going on? Young says, uh, did uh, Xavier run the forty at Philly? I don't know. 
I don't know if I saw Xavier. Yeah, I think he did. Actually. Not. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I don't... he ran a four four seven, but I'm not sure. Keon Coleman's up right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. So this is the guy you're talking about. There's another mm-hmm. another tall wide receiver. Mm-hmm. See, man. See, I think I think the Eagles got to try to think think a little differently. You know, try to try to take advantage of your strengths. Here's Keon Coleman running. He ran a four six two. Okay. That that's I mean that's not compared to what some of the other guys four six two. Okay. Sneed still could happen. Small. I wonder how they would do the whole Sneed thing because if you're playing Slay, what you're paying? We just looked at Bradbury's contract. How are you going to pay Sneed? I don't know, but dude, Saquon Barkley is going to be an eagle. Oh my God. I thought no. Was... I'm saying, dude. I'm I'm just saying, like something something weird is going to happen. Something's going to happen like that. I I I feel like I thought that was like your dark horse. The box is coming, huh? Oh, that's outside the box. Yeah, you said that was going to be like the most outside the box move that nobody. Yeah, it's an outside the box move. Yeah. <clears throat> Michael Goldberg said, I missed the super chat. I'm sorry, buddy. Let me see if I can find it. I thought I read it. No, no, we, we read it, man. We read this. Uh, I, I guess you missed our answer, but we, we did read your super chat. I said, Joey's going to answer this question. And do you guys really want Slay as a mentor? And I let Joey answer. And Joey said, no, basically he's ready to move him out of Philly right now. He's He's got the truck ready to go. So I think that answers it, right? The truck is warmed up. I don't I don't I don't I don't view him as, as that. No. <clears throat> yeah, you know what to me what he said, like I don't know. I, it's like whatever, dude. Just play football. Uh, you know, complain you don't like us, you you know, use the fans as motivation. I don't care. You know what I mean? Use this as motivation. Just go play well. Hey, speaking negative about it, like he was complaining about, or you know, well, the, the Eagles, you know, the the crowd was yelling to run the football, you know, run the ball in that game, and the crowd like all said, "Run the ball." <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like well, then he then he pointed out, and then we ran the ball and didn't get any yards, and they still cheered. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I tell you, the Eagle fans have scarred Darius Slay. There's no mm-hmm. doubt. James Young says, "If Dallas Turner is there, do you take him?" Yeah, but he won't be there. I don't think there's a, a fan. I don't think there's a mock draft I've seen where Turner's not top twelve to thirteen. You know, Philly five hundred would know about Phil McCocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, thanks, Death. Phil McCocky. Do you see that the Cowboys lost Tyron? Uh, they're letting go of Tyron Smith. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Did you see Jerry Jones making babies at eighty something years old, eight thousand no. years old? Yeah, he's got to take a paternity test because apparently he knocked up a twenty-seven year old. Who the fuck would touch that? <laughs> Who <would> touch? <laughs> hey man, that's eight thousand years of 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 just marination. Eight thousand <laughs> years of marination. <laughs> Jerry Jones is well marinated. <laughs> uh, I guess money helps. Yeah, you would say they don't care what you look like. You got the, they don't care. You could have a nose on the side of your head. They're all about it. Jerry Jones is well marinated, dude. Eight thousand years old. That's oh my nasty. god. This draft is pretty deep. So was Jerry Jones, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yeah, Dallas, is, they got their own issues, you know? <laughs> Andy says, uh, how are you all saying Reddick is gets traded to the Cowboys. Your thoughts on trade? Well, that was a, there was a report from sports illustrated about that. That wasn't like us. 
mm. that you know we commented talked about a report from Sports Illustrated that the Cowboys are trying to find a way to trade for Reddick. Um, you know, I I don't know. You know, I do I thoughts on trade for part. Listen, I would love. I I think Michael Parsons is a hell of a player, and I think he wants to be an Eagle. Um, yeah, I would take Parsons in a second. But they're, they're they're not trying to trade them. They, they were talking about using having both those guys for a year, you know. But I mean that that came from Sports Illustrated. That that had right, you know, right. You know the thing is, is you know this time of year, you know, you you, you got to kind of kind of got to comment on the stories that are out there and give your opinions on them because it's it's the off season. Yeah, it's Bradbury all stunk last season. What was that? No, I'm just saying it's all speculation, and rumors. Yeah. Like this is wow. all it is right now. Xavier Leggett, four three nine, <clears throat> on his second attempt. Luke McCaffrey, second attempt. Mm. Four five. Let's see what. Let's see what our, our buddy Lad McConkey does. I want to see a dying run again. Here's McConkey again. He ran a four four three the first time, four four the second. Oh, wow. Dude, that's he solidified himself. And now Mitchell's running. I'm waiting for Mitchell to run again. He ran a 4-3-5. Bradbury stunk last season, but the whole defense kind of did. It all makes sense. They'd give him another chance. I don't think I, you know, I, I think the cap numbers are they don't really have a chance. I think Bradbury lost confidence after the Super Bowl. I, I really think that Schuster messing with him in the offseason messed him his head up. That's my theory. Yeah, I believe it. All right. Bub Means is, is running. And then Mitchell. I want to see Mitchell run again. Bub Means is a great name. It's a great name. Bub Means. I like that. He ran a 449. Slate keeps contradicting himself. He keeps saying he doesn't have negative feelings towards the Philly fans. And it says Philly fans are the only ones that have gotten their skin. I know. I know, but I think it's so funny that he had to bring in Nelson to, to actually talk about the Eagle fans. Like, it, it's definitely in his head. But, I mean, listen, dude, they, they stunk last year at the end of the year. I don't understand how any player could think that they're not going to talk about them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, you can't go on a podcast every week. You want to talk about the game, how it went, and stuff like that. That's fine. But, you know, he gets he gets triggered pretty easily if, if bad things are said about him. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on, now they're interviewing somebody. I want to see Mitchell run. Uh, McConkey looks good. That just That just sounds so weird to me. <laughs> but it's not the same McConkey. <clears throat> Do you think Nicobe Dean is the answer or part of it? Oh, here's here's is this Mitchell running? I I feel like I feel like it, it yet to be determined. You know, like I I think that people are giving up on him really really quick, but at the same time, you know, he hasn't showed us anything. <clears throat> at all. You're not you're not available. I mean, you have been available, so you've been yeah. IR twice. Was hurt. You were hurt. I mean, you can't get hurt during OTAs and joint practices and preseason. That's like that's what gets you prepared for the regular season. Um, even yeah. though they didn't play too well, but you know, I think I think the Kobe Dean. I think this is a make or break year for him. I think it's a make or break year for Jordan Davis. I think it's a make or break year for some of those guys. You know, but if 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 Dean can't stay healthy, it's mm. not going to help because I feel like with Dean. It's like, yeah, he, he makes mistakes on the field, but he's not getting enough rep because he's yeah. not healthy long enough. He he needs to play and stay healthy. I'm waiting to see Mitchell run. I haven't seen it. Yeah, they they they, they cut away right before he was about to run the second time. Guy ran a four three five the first run. Now they're talking about Luke McCaffrey. Uh, John Jones says, guys, I think it could be uh it for howie because he's got some pressure on him to hit this draft and next year depending on what happens this draft maybe maybe i mean i don't know what do you think you think howie could actually be uh on the 
on the chopping block. I can never, I can never, I can never see Jeffrey Lurie putting pressure on him. I, I mean, I think, I think they put, I think the they they made how I think he made how he put pressure on Nick, giving him the ultimate, you know, the ultimatum of you know, fire your coordinators or you know, you could go, you know, and I think, um, you know, that's what was made for him to do, and they've given Nick no control over the coaching hires. I mean, right. none. They did a lot more. They did a lot more with the coaching hires than I expected them to do. I didn't think they were going to go that crazy with it. I mean, they completely just revamped that whole coaching staff. So I, I knew that I, I, I'm not surprised by the amount of coaches that they, they fired. I was surprised about the amount of experience that they made sure to bring in. You know, you had you have a defensive line coach who was a def, literally a defensive coordinator for Seattle last year. I love that pickup, by the way. I I swear mm-hmm. I think he's there for Jordan Davis because he's big enough to beat his ass. <laughs> you know, I mean yeah, that yeah. Dude, that dude will get get to Jordan Davis. But I mean, we'll we'll, we'll see, Mister International. What's going on, my man? He says I drafted Adonis Mitchell a few days ago in Madden, and he. Had a hidden development trait and produced for five years, thousand yards each star uh, trait play. Really, dude, I like. Him. Would you would you draft the wide receiver in the first round? Would that not shock everybody? It would be a total Holy shock. Crap. It'd be a total shock. Yeah, yeah. I think I think something. I mean, like, listen. I, what I don't want to see. Right? <clears throat> I don't like like the whole Justin Simmons rumor. That doesn't do anything for me. No. Do I really want another 30 year old safety to come in? Like, are we going to just keep doing this or are we going to change things up? Yeah. I would rather go younger and inexperienced on defense, have an upstart defense, and then make my offense have no weaknesses. It's, a, points again. it's, there, it's already enough that you want to, you know, that there's 30 year old, 28 to 30 year old, you know, safeties available in free agency, but the trade for one and give up compensation on top of acquiring a 30 year old safety, that's not going to be here long term. It's no. not great. Just go spend the extra money, save the pick, go spend the extra money and get CJ Gardner Johnson back. I, Seriously. I think that's going to be the test. I think the test is, well, Howie, look how much money you have. What are you going to do with it? You don't – he never has this much cap. He's going to have more. This is close to $50 million, and right. that's from, from one move, one. Right. And we have even right. – Hassan Reddick is a whole different story right now. They get you over 60. See, and I feel like Reddick is that move. Like, in my opinion, depending upon what happens with Reddick, takes our – our off season and totally yes i've said yes i've said this a million times i think you know, it totally changes everything to me if you trade reddick then i look at the eagles and say well are you really trying to win next year and if you keep reddick then i say to myself you've got to try to win next year so i really think it depends on what they do with reddick you know db talking now says would love to see dean put on 10 pounds and watch him flourish under the new defensive coaching staff I agree. I would love. I would love to see that too. I'm not. I've not given up on him yet, but I need. I need him to stay healthy. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> right. You like L- L- Lad McConkey as a uh, as a guy to be a, th- a slot receiver. A three? For you? Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, because he's yeah, he, he looks he, like he would be good there. He changes direction on a dime. I mean, he's an in space. Like I wouldn't say Tyreek Hill esque, but. He could he could stop in space, turn direction on a dime at a hundred percent speed. I mean, it's, I mean, he's fantastic. They could use him on, on so many different levels. I mean, if you remember too, like Britton Covey, you know, I would I would really like for him to get involved in this offense. You know, on some on some third down. You know, he's a more of a, a gadget wide receiver. So, um, yeah. His breaks, dude. Like lads, Lad McConkey's breaks are like, oof, my so God. they're they're just actually talking about McConkey on, on TV. There, they said that uh, Daniel Jeremiah said that he thinks McConkey is more than just a slot. He thinks he could also play outside, which mm. is great, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, it's gonna be in, it's gonna be interesting. I want to see I want to see Donna Mitchell run nine ninety three catches last year, fourteen hundred yards. <laughs> Jesus, he ran. I mean, he ran a four three five. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm. I know. I'm looking. I'm looking at him. Yeah. Like yes. 
you know, I mean, that would be that would be a crazy. Nobody would think it's coming, but geez, you would have you would then cover yourself wide receiver for the next six years. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like if well, you know, knock on wood, like if somebody ended up getting hurt or something, like who who walks in right now? Like that's a problem. Like last year, they could have moved Quez inside, outside. They could have maybe more used more Julio Jones if they had to. Um, but they, we, you know, it's early in the process right now. But what if, you know, God forbid somebody goes down for a couple of weeks, like who takes that spot? You know what I mean? Or you need a number three guy. So th there could be a guy here that falls down, or I don't know. Yeah. While well, they're showing Mitchell, they're doing a Samuel cast with AJ Brown, the Donnie Mitchell, and Julio Jones. How about that? And uh, Mitchell beat wow. both of them. Brown ran a four four nine. Jones ran a four four two. And this kid just ran a four three five. But they're all the same, I guess. Size coming out of college. Oh man! I... <laughs> Mark, they were super chat, my man. He goes trade Reddick and Sweat. Then yeah, well then then we could say uh, congratulations on the NFC East Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Sign Chase Young and Burns. We would be set for at least five years. What do you think? I, I think that I think that you would dude uh Burns would cost you, let's see, so that's 30 million, you figure. 13, that's 43 million. It's a downgrade. It's a it's a downgrade. It, it, it is. Yeah, I think it's a downgrade. You get younger though. I mean, you do get younger. Yes. But you know, if you're winning right thing, now. I mean, if you're trying to win right now, it, well, you're paying Reddick what twenty? You're going to pay him like twenty, and you're going to pay Sweat twenty. So that's like forty million. So yeah, it would it would be ballsy. I I, I think if you could not, I I can't trade Reddick though. I mean, I know Burns is good, but man, Reddick. Yeah, I don't know. That just shows million. rebuild. That just shows rebuild. They get rid of Sweat and Reddick. That would be horrible. And and the, and the other problem is Chase Young. I I think bringing in Chase Young as a third defensive end is like uh, is fine. Do it because he would be your third guy. But this would make him your second guy, and he's got to stay healthy and prove that he can stay healthy. You know, I don't mind taking a chance on him as a third pass rusher, but as my second, I don't know. Yeah, CJ Gardner Johnson's got to come back. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for the free agents. I I just can't wait for it to start, man. I'm like dying here. You know, hung meow. <laughs> Interesting name, Philippe. You need to invite Mark Holmes, the grown ass man. He could come on. All you have to do is text me. Yeah, we cut Kevin Byard. That that's correct. Thirteen million dollars we saved. We need a great defensive line rotation, like twenty seventeen. I agree. I, I think you definitely need to to upgrade the rotation. And I mean, that's what I've been saying. Like you, you've got to upgrade the rotation and keep Hassan Reddick. Like I don't see how you can trade Hassan Reddick and then you know what I mean. Mm. I don't know. Dean has got it. Um, Dean has got it from him tackling Derrick Henry with one arm while being held. Yeah, I remember that that game. Yeah, he took a look. He looked good because he took over in twenty two. He took over in games where the Eagles had leads, and he came in and and flashed and did well. You know, he flashed, and you know when the Eagles had leads, he he got into some games. But as a full time starter. His availability has been the biggest question. I mean, I won't put too much into how he played because everybody didn't play well, but, you know, a better coaching staff, obviously. But his availability is the number one thing that makes me nervous, that you can't just walk into next season and say, oh, yeah, N'Kobe Dean is definitely – you got to put competition in front of him. You know, that's – Right. That's, that's not – it's not enough. That you sign one-year deals all over that position. So, yeah, you know. No, no, I hear you. Oh, uh, Frank says, "What are your thoughts on the rumors of Eagle signing project punter in European soccer store um, Milik Yabolsak?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was serious for a second. I was like, "Oh, intrigue." And then I said, "Oh, Milik, my ballsack or whatever." Thank you. 
You got me. ADW the beat David Super Chat. He goes, McConkey or McCaffrey, which would eat for us? I I I, I like the idea of McConkey. Just from I mean, just a, it's just a quick look. I, he looks like a guy that would fit right in our slot, but um, I don't know. McCaffrey, you know, I have to I have to go really study him more. I know he's got his brother. We'll see. Yeah, I like what McConkey a lot. I like Lad McConkey. I've been on the Lad McConkey train for a bit. So on the train, uh, on the, on the train. train, not 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 his the train. train. Not yeah. Right. I I understand. Right. <laughs> Uh, what is the combine? Oh, yeah, it's on the NFL Network. Let's see. Dean's availability is not as big of a problem as people act. Do we forget we? He was basically a redshirt linebacker his rookie year. Okay, so but, but he he was he got hurt his rookie year. Didn't he get hurt um, late in the year? His rookie year. I don't. I don't know. I think I don't he know got he hurt. Did. He started. I think he got hurt, and then he came back last year. He got hurt again. Then he came back, and then he got hurt again. So, in his two years, I mean, he, he's never healthy. He's four he, times know, been hurt four times in two years. I feel like you know, I'm you know, I'm not giving up on him. But no. I mean, he, he's got to play. But he, don't. He but. But don't because you know the Eagles went to last off season. They were like, "Oh, we have Nicobe Dean. Don't worry." Like they went, they went in knowing the Kobe Dean was starting, and they were just going to add some one year deal pieces around him, and that was it. You know, they they thought Nicobe Dean was going to go off last year with this defensive scheme that they had um, under the coaching staff that they had. But this year is completely different. Don't make anybody comfortable at these positions. Make them uncomfortable. Don't don't right. have them think that they're going to start. Like Nicobe Dean needs to. Ha- there's got to be a lot of. See if they were Reed Blankenship. Put as much competition in that room as possible. Oh, yeah. As much as possible. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, James, this is 500. There's a rumor that the Eagles are getting a backup quarterback from the Jets. Who is Zach Wilson? Is, are you talking about Wilson? Because Wilson got permission to seek a trade. Jeez. I saw that. Um, huh. I mean, I don't want Zach Wilson at all. But if they think they something they can develop, I guess, you know, you never know what the Eagles and these quarterbacks they, they like to develop. Don't even waste don't even waste your money. Do like especially like don't like don't pay a quarter a backup quarterback five million dollars. Like at this right. point, it's like it's just it's a waste of money. And that was a waste of money yeah. last year. Yeah. So Robert says Reddick is coming back. Yeah, I think Reddick's coming back. I chance, yeah. I, I, I I think there's more likely he's coming back. The question is, is will he come back and get an extension? Or will he just play out his contract? The, the, the Eagles are not going to just give him away for nothing, Joey. They're not going to give a guy a double-digit no, sack guy no. away. I don't even think a second-round pick gets it done. No, it's got to be more than that. A 500, would you be mad if we keep cutting him? I think we are. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't be mad if, if he's a backup, but you've got to – you've got to me, you've got to go out and get linebackers. Like – I think you have enough money to get at least one starting linebacker in free agency and then draft a couple. You know, mm-hmm. I think Van Ginkles, I think Van Ginkles already already looking for homes. Cause I, I think if there's one guy I'm almost positive I felt like we'll be here, it's Van Ginkle. I close my eyes and I see the sideline. I see Thor with his long hair, and I see skinny Batman. Batman and Thor are, are, are going to be playing on the same team. Mm-hmm. Also, says Van Ginkle, CJ Garner, Johnson would improve the defense immediately. Agree. I, and I don't dislike Van Ginkle. I don't think he's the best linebacker out there, but I think probably for Scheme the price, fit. I think they probably could get a decent price and get get yeah. production from him. You know, and and scheme fit too. Like he played the best under Fangio. He played his best right. year under him. So right. why not sign with the de- sign big money with with the defensive coordinator that right. made you successful? So and I think C.J. Garner Johnson was just he was <laughs> missed so bad by the Eagles. Not just for his play on the field, but like I think the way he carries himself. I think the attitude. I think it's a big deal. So I think those guys. Or you know, yeah. Was, no, I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't. I don't know. You must. You must be talking about. I didn't say he was a bust. I said it's too early to call him a bust. 
Right. You know, he's got to play. He, let him play, you know. Um, but I do think that if 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 we go through another year and Dean and he's hurt and banged up like this, I I I think he's I think he's done this Donnie Mitchell. Oh, he fell. He tripped. He's all right. And McConkie is smooth on those catches. Oh man, I'm like, man, wide receiver round one would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. CJ would be a great move. CJ would be great. Man. I think it yeah. has to be the move. Like, I feel like it has to be the move. CJ Gardner Johnson? Yes. Do you worry about, like, because I saw some fans talking about, well, you know, Slay had issues with the Eagle fans, and so did uh, so did he. Do you think that would be a problem? He got, I don't think it would be. Chauncey got attacked by Eagle fans because he because everyone was pissed off that he signed with the Lions, and he took less money over there. Whatever this backloaded contract from Howie Rose, but it was like a three-year, $22 million deal or something, and it was backloaded to where he was only making like, – he was making most of his money his last year of his deal. It was just backloaded. I don't know what the relationship is or how it broke down, but how he couldn't wait. I think – Chauncey wanted to get paid as a safety, and and teams weren't going to give him that. He played safety for one year, and that's he wanted safety money, not not corner money, obviously. Um, and and most of them looked looked at him as a corner more than a safety. So I don't know something with his whatever he did with that. I don't. Know, there were some stupid oh, I think, talks. I with I, his I agent. also think. I also think that they overvalued themselves because I think a lot of teams took it as like, all right, he played one good year at safety, but you know, it's not enough to put mm -hmm. all this money in. He did it for one good year on a team that was getting ridiculous amount of sacks. And, and that's how I think teams looked at it. They kind of wanted him to do it one more year. Um, but now, you know, he did, he did come back for the playoffs. I don't think he had a great NFC championship game, but um, he did come back and he did play. And I don't know that he'll get, I don't know how much money he's going to expect this year in free Can't agency. Be much. But if I'm the Eagles, I mean, how, how old is CJ Gardner Johnson? He's got to be what? 26 years old. Yeah. Something like that. 26. Let me look it up. I want to see what he, I think he's like really young. Perfect contract to have. At least give him a two-year deal. And then... he, he, he just turned 26 in December. Literally just turned 26 in December. See, that's what I'm saying. Why do I want to go out and trade for Justin Simmons, who's 30, who I might have a year? I mean, we trade for Bayard. Bayard's, what, 30? I don't know how old Bayard. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, but what. if you if you sign Chauncey, you're not signing him to a four-year mega extension. It's going to be like a, a short extension to where, like, they'll think about – giving him a long-term deal if he See, you know, I would you wouldn't sign him to a four-year deal. So I would sign CJ Gardner Johnson in four years. I'd go like four or five years. He'll be 31 years old when it's up. I say I say sign him. Sign it's him. It's the perfect time. Yeah, it's the perfect time yeah. where his age is at too. It's a perfect time. Yeah, it's perfect. He solidifies it. Then you you know and I think I think the I think having him there makes makes blank and shit better. Yeah, because uh, I don't think Blanket Chip is uh, your number one safety. Okay, I think he's a good rotational safety. I think he could be maybe a, a solid number two, but like you don't, know, don't, don't piss solid. people like, off. Don't piss, to... don't piss people off now with that because a lot of people like that's that's what I'm saying, dude. Like you 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 gave an undrafted free agent a chance. He 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 looked really good, and he kind and he still looks pretty good, but like. Do, do people not want to give him competition? Do ever does everyone think that Reblankship is like the best safety we've we've had in recent years? Like, is he the next? I don't know. I don't know what people think of him as because I don't think you know what I think people good. like him because he hits. You know, That's, he actually. Yeah. No, I but, get it, but but I, I listen, dude. I I I, I CJ Garner Johnson is a turnover machine. I think he's got a nose for turnovers. Uh, he was a huge loss. If you bring him back, man, changes everything to me. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is Donnie Mitchell, mother humper. I look at this guy I go, man, man, just outside the box thinking. You go out, you get Derrick Henry and Swift, and then you draft a wide receiver in the first round. 
Well, hey. tell me where tell me where your offense is going to ever not score. Yeah, I know. Like you, I mean, they need that third option and a future one option for later on. Right. If that's what they want to do. Yeah, and you yeah. purely do it because the reality of what AJ Brown is is, I don't know how you keep him and and Devonte together another three years. You know, I don't know how you do it. That guy's fat. That guy is quick. Who? That Donnie you? Mitchell. No, nah, Donnie Mitchell. Oh, Mitchell he's quick. fast. He ran a four three five, six foot two, same size as Brown and Julio Jones, and he's faster than them. Um, my basement says CJ Gardner Johnson make definitely makes a uh, blanket ship in the whole secondary. Bear he's uh, helps everyone. He's a ball hawk. I agree, and 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 he gives them a swagger they didn't have. You know, like like. There was a Twitter post about about Bradbury getting pushed around, and that if C.J. Garner Johnson was there last year, it wouldn't happen. I mean, he talked mad smack to Debo Samuel. I I, I like I like C.J. Garner Johnson, dude. I do. I I would love to get him back. Fabio Davis Super Chat goes. C.J. Downside is tackling. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, we're not saying he's perfect, but man, he 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 definitely helps your secondary. You know, Lad McConkey is a dynamic slot wide receiver. He would be everything Watkins mm. would. I think he would be great. He'd be yeah, I, I would love something like that. I mean, just, you know, if you just do something differently out of the box, it would be very interesting if the Eagles said, all right, you know what? We're going to, we're going to go out. We're going to get our Van Ginkle because we know we have to. And we're gonna get Van Ginkle. We're gonna we're gonna make Hassan Reddick happy, uh, but we're gonna go out and get uh, Swift back, and we're gonna get Derrick Henry, and then we're gonna draft the wide receiver in the first round, and then what our two seconds, thirds, everything else is defense, mm. and then we're gonna play the young guys and let our offense carry us. I love that idea, man. Mm. I love it. Well, that's what we wanted to do yes last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't think Lad was that fast either. I thought he was ready to 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 the McConkey from the Giants that used to drive me nuts. Uh, like I said, Mitchell was super explosive in my Madden rebuild. I paired him uh, with JJ McCarthy and the Falcons. He was literally running the past defensive backs. I like it. I got. I like it. Yeah, the Eagles got Deshaun Jackson in the second. That was an Andy Reid pick. Uh, why people think we need a slot wide receiver? We could get an outside wide receiver and move Smitty to the slot. See, I think, I think you got to keep Devontae where he is. Now, if you want to move guys around, I'm okay with that. But um, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I wouldn't move. I wouldn't ever take Devontae out of no, the No, never do that. No. I mean, I, I mean, look, a certain play, you can move guys around. I'm okay with that. But, man, just let Devontae be, man. Devontae Smith is is just, just needs targets. Mm-hmm. You know? What about offensive tackle? Lane Johnson is picking up uh, for his replacement for the first round pick. That could be possible. If, if, if there's a legitimate right tackle who is there and he's, he's you know, heads above everybody else, uh, then I'm okay with it. But the chances are if you get a tackle that good, he's going to go way before we pick. You know, usually those tackles don't last long. No. But. But if, if you tell me there's a right tackle and he's in the draft and his upside is way better than all these other guys, uh, then I'm taking the best talented player. Yes, yeah, Smitty needs that extension. He'll get it. Yeah. He'll get it. Dude, the Eagles are going to go wide receiver in the first round. Oh, Here my God. Go. I'm having crazy thoughts, man. I, I, I the, Tordyville. It's all Tordyville's fault. He planted the seed. Now I'm now I've got my my brain is slowly <laughs> slowly starting to spin. You know, but I'm just, I'm seriously I'm thinking about last year's draft. You know, uh, we we were we talked about this major even, offense. 
even yeah, even, it was. even if they sign a wide receiver three, you still you you think a possibility they would still hit that position? No, not if they signed one. But it, you know, and, and, and if you're if you're Howie, and you're looking not just for next year, but but you're saying, all right, listen, we need a third wide receiver, but we know in two years AJ Brown's not going to be here anymore. Why not get somebody who can move right outside when the time comes? You know, seriously, I, I mean, it, it's it's not a, you know, if you get a guy that will eventually be a starter on the outside, but in the meantime plays in the slot to give you th third wide receiver, I mean, could you imagine? Like, imagine if they got that Mitchell kid or something, and, and he turns out to be a stud. And now you have those three guys for two more years, and then when AJ Brown goes, he goes right outside, and yeah. you have Monte for the next five years. Yeah, it makes I mean, sense. It's a crazy thought. It's not. It's not what you think. You know, we what we think is the Eagles are going to go out. They're going to get defensive players, and they're going to get this. You know, maybe a defensive end or edge rusher, and we're going to just go for there. But if you think about it, a few years down the road, it could be one of those like. Future moves. Well, they get a guy that's or from Lad McConkey too. Like they get a guy who could play outside, inside. That's quick off the line, right. explosive off the line, change direction. Like they right. could use him for you know specific things. I mean, he's he's a little small, obviously, but I mean the guy. See what he does on the NFL. Level, we'll see what he does on the NFL level. See, so. What I don't understand is is if you look at the Eagles and you look at Nick Sirianni and you look at, and let me just say this for people, especially they're going to watch this back later. Like we're just speculating, trying to think outside mm -hmm. the box. We're just thinking about different ideas and scenarios. We're not committing to anything. We're just brainstorming. But for a coach and a team that says we're an offensive team, we like the offensive big plays, and it's offense, 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 offense. But when they have a chance to really upgrade that third wide receiver position, they really never did it like to the effect that they can. What if they just put resources in? to like immediate resources into the offense and then said the defensive players we're going to draft, we're going to plug them in and we're going to let them play and learn. Now they'll have learning. Don't make mistakes. The defense will be a working project, but it'll get better as the year goes forward. In the meantime, nobody's going to be able, our offense is going to carry us and we're going to put up 30 points a game. I mean, it's not that bad. Yeah, Kellen you know? Moore get Kellen Moore will get will get productivity out of every position in his offense. Like he needs to get as much out of it as possible because they're not going to just going to have a Quez Watkins type player at receiver or some guy like that that's really hasn't shown much. Like they're they're want to upgrade. They want to upgrade that position right now and 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 get this offense moving. Um, while you still have AJ Brown, Devontae Smith still here, this offensive line and obviously Jalen Hurst that can extend plays on his own. So. It, right. it, I'm excited to see what they do at that position. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's going the, the whole the whole off season. Like it, it's going to be really interesting um, to to see what they to see what they do. I agree. Let me see here. Where was I? F it. Get Simmons, CJ Gardner, Johnson. So I don't. I don't want Simmons. I. I. I, no. I don't want. I don't. I don't want 30 year olds one year. I don't want to do this again. Like I, I want to get away from the, the one year piece together, our team. Right. Thing. Right. You know, let's just get young guys. You've got a great offense. Let's just boost it up. Make sure we have no weaknesses and then let's go get players and let them learn. You know, true. That's what I think. Uh, Frank says, I'm not sold on Blankenship. Brown needs a heel. We really need two safeties. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I know that, that that there's some people that absolutely, I think, overvalue Reed Blankenship. Uh, but I, you know, listen, I uh, to me, I, I feel Blankenship is a really good depth guy, and I think he could be a solid number two. I think he could develop that, um, you know. The way I guess I see the safety is maybe, like, I'm thinking maybe you don't have uh, it all set up for, like, like right away. And don't forget you have Sidney Brown. So Sidney Brown and C.J. Gardner-Johnson may be your starters in a few years. 
But in the meantime, you got Blankenship. I think getting two safeties would be great, but as long as we get one, I, I, I think we can survive. Right, right. You know. Uh, any whoever thinks the Eagles are going to draft the receiver in the first round should definitely be working for the NFL. I don't think anybody thinks that the Eagles are going to draft a wide receiver. Shots <laughs> fired. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. I don't even understand that. Just because your brains, just because you talk about scenarios, doesn't mean you're signing anybody signing off on it. You know, I. Uh, you know, otherwise, how? I, you got I don't. Then why are we? Then then why are we here? Then then why do we do this? Do we do like like I don't I don't. They gotta have fun with it too. Like I don't get why everything's gotta be serious, serious. You know, we have to be in a. I don't know. It's definitely not serious. I mean, we just talked about Jerry Jones marination. I don't think we're very serious here. <laughs> you know, but you gotta be. You should be able to brainstorm and talk about ideas. This idea nowadays that you can't you can't say things or talk about things that. Everybody else doesn't think because it's bad. It's it's like, dude, I can't do it. I have to be able to think about all situations, and and doesn't mean I, I'm I buy it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what if we do this? What if we do that? That to me, that's interesting. You know, Antoine know. Winfield Jr. free agent. Oh, yeah, the. That's huge. It, like that. I mean, yeah huge. that that would be big time, big time, big money, and and I don't think anybody could get upset at that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if CJ Gardner Johnson uh, comes back, we might get him a reasonable price, not hundred percent overspend. Yeah, that injury. Yeah, helps. I mean, I think because he didn't he didn't play a lot last year, I think it it helps in terms of price. Maybe he wants to come back too. You know, so. I don't know. We'll we'll see. <laughs> Philly, don't talk about Mark Holmes' dad, Jerry Jones. He will cry in the air. Mark Mark is losing his mind lately because of the uh you know the whole Dak Prescott thing. You know, I don't know. It's crazy, man. But we shouldn't talk about. It. We we should only talk about what what uh world we we should get like a script mailed to us and say, here's what you can talk about, but here's what you can't talk about. Don't talk about Mm -hmm. this, but you talk about that. That's what fun is that? What is this? What are we in the Soviet Union? Mm -hmm. Kind of, I guess we kind of (laughs) are. I want Derrick Henry. We could use him in the red zone. I would love Derrick Henry. Uh, Not just for the red zone. I mean, you could do so much with him. Can you imagine Derrick Henry on, on this? You know what I mean? Uh, on this line and be unbelievable. Mr. International says uh, Eagles need to coach or to catch up to the Chiefs and end of discussion. Chiefs, man. The Chiefs are going to be tough again. I think the Chiefs are going to get a receiver. You might. Who the hell? Let's see. Joey in 500. This debate also needs to be settled. Current AJ Brown or Tio when he was on the Eagles? When he was on the Eagles? Man. I, I, I would say I I think probably AJ Brown had a better career with the Eagles, but you know, Tio, man. If if Tio would have stayed with the Eagles for three four years, it would have been Tio. But he left. He he had one good year, and then and then everything broke down. Mm. So you have to you have to go with AJ. You know. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I said run the ball. Yeah, I like that when he says that in that thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a big question. I mean, it's it's all a big question mark. We like, what do you rumors think? are starting. To, go ahead. No, go ahead. What are you gonna say? What no, gonna nothing. Say? Not nothing valuable. I was so. just gonna ask you, what do you think the next domino? Like, what do you think that the next thing that's gonna happen for this team? What do you think the next move is? I think the next thing that's gonna happen as of this, I think coming this next week. I think next Wednesday. I think. Kelsey's gonna announce if he's retiring or not on New Heights. So 
that's oh, you think the next, he, is, is that what he said? I think that's what he said. Yeah, he's gonna announce it next Wednesday. Mm. That's the next bit of news we're gonna get. Um, and then hopefully the Hassan Reddick stuff is next. Hopefully that's that's got to get done soon. You can't you can't let this get in. I mean, he's still on contract; doesn't matter. But you can't let this string out past March 11th. Like, you know, that money needs to be used. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, if the Eagles could just spend it, that they know they're going to extend them sooner or later. They'll, they'll just sign whoever they got to sign. But yeah, not another Philly fan. That those are probably the quotes of Darius Slay. <laughs> <laughs> our Eagles, our Eagles are going to ignore the run game again. Yeah, I hope not. I, I hope not. I mean, they, you know, one of the things the Cowboy fans used to complain of was that they'd said Kellen Moore didn't run enough, but I think he ran a lot more than we did. Um, yes. I don't know. I I say, like, I'm all about the Derrick Henry DeAndre Swift combination next year, man. One year, just let's go at it. Let's do it. Yeah, even but, like at least he gets pretty, the running backs involved in the passing game. At least he does something with them. He definitely runs more than we do, but he gets them in the passing game though, which is great. So, yeah, exactly. Frank says I want Eckler or Pollard. I take any other top five. Why Pollard? Like I, I mean, I don't know. I thought Pollard was very disappointing. I mean, I'm not a Cowboy fan, but. Like, from what I heard in Cowboy Finn said, I mean, I don't think they were that impressed or happy with Pollard. I mean, they're all talking about getting Derrick Henry themselves. I think they're the, I think they're the team to watch with Saquon Barkley, to be honest with you. Mm. I know there's a lot of rumors about him in Houston, but, dude, I would not be surprised if Dallas makes a play for him at all. Interesting. Yeah, it's just everyone's opinion. It's all, that's right. That's right. Exactly. And the great thing about about us is that that all opinions count, and they're just opinions, and we respect it, whether you agree or not. And we're not always right. We're not, you know, no, we're no. right, we're wrong. No, so. no. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm just, we're just thinking outside the box because we're trying to think. All right, how? What is the quickest, best way for this team to get back to you know being competitive in the Super Bowl? What what can you do to be instantly? get there again but not not do it in a way where you're just bringing in all these one-year guys that are going to be gone when the year's up like how do you do it and make it sustainable and that and that's worth thinking about that that's that's the whole point about talking about the offense you know right i yeah. actually like you know i actually like the idea of 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 making your offense better. Now I'm not saying draft a wide receiver in the first round. Obviously, I think I think I would like to see a corner. Like I want to see them draft a corner, a corner that could come in and start right away. That's what I want to see the first round. But the idea that, that you could go out and get like a Derrick Henry and Swift and have no weaknesses on offense at mm -hmm. all, and then have all these young defensive players that are going to actually learn to play and be there for the next four or five years. It's a very appealing to me, dude. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you have to, like I said, you, you get, you could think more outside the box because you're not just thinking about this year. There are players in this draft where you could say, Oh, these contracts are about to expire in a couple of years. And this guy will be in the building and you'll have another pass catcher. You'll have, you'll have another wide receiver. You'll, if you draft somebody out of the box that you've never thought of, like got to think down the road too. It's not just this year. It's, it's, it's future. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. It's an interesting comment. Uh, Retko says, uh, had it with Lurie and Roseman's silliness. They lose supporters unless they get their shit together. Uh, be loyal to fans and players and the goal of winning the championship. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of people that are, are, are kind of fed up with that and, and the inner workings of, of how it operates. And, and, and I totally, I totally get it. You know, I, I, I do, you know, and, you know, how he doesn't really come out. They, there's never like at the press conference, they, they don't talk about like how the front office is accountable. Like, you know, you had the coaches change, right? You got all these new coordinators, all these new positional coaches. We know who was basically held responsible for last year. But like, what is Howie's role in that? Like, what is Howie sitting there going, all right, I got to do this different. We got to do this different in the front office. Like, 
What is going to change about what he did last year and what he does this year? That's what I'm waiting to see mm-hmm. because they're not going to tell you, you know what I mean? But, like, if he goes out and they start si- putting money, let's say they go out and sign Van Ginkle and Patrick Queen in free agency. All of a sudden, you're going to say, all right, they're, they've, they've changed their philosophy on linebacker. Mm-hmm. 41 to 33, David Super Chat. He goes, Casey said using a, a franchise tag on Snee. Chris Jones, a free agent, top five to 10 player in the league. Can't see uses tag on him, 33 million. Go get him. Well, I think I think they're only using the tag to trade them, right? It's yes. tag and trade. Yes. So he's going to get traded. And Chris Jones, I mean, I mean, what can you say, dude? The, the guy's a stud. Anybody that said sign it, it's hard for me to, to argue. Do I think the Eagles would do it? No, because they got two first round picks at, at you know interior. But I mean, I, I get it. You know, as far as Kelsey goes. Um, I'm going to be interested to see if he does retire. I, you think he retires? I think he's coming back one more. Time. I, I think I it's it's he's been at the he said he's been at the gyms like just making sure he's working. Like why would you go back and work out, stay in shape just in case you're coming back? I mean, it's just it feels like it's going towards the direction he's coming back. So right, right. David says, "What are your expectations for Isaiah Rogers?" My expectations is that he's your starting uh, slot corner, and that. And that he starts, and that and that he's fairly, you know, fairly good, uh, and he's a solid piece, and that he's basically going to replace Avante Maddox, mm-hmm. and Maddox is probably going to be gone. Yeah, so that's the that's the uh, idea right now. Yeah. Frank Reynolds says, "Phil, your idea makes sense. Our window is now." With this office, makes the offense unstoppable. Make the D young. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And then your offense, you know, puts up points, carries your defense, and the defense gets better as as they as they play and time goes. And then you know, in a few years, when you know, hopefully, actually, by the end of the year, they start playing really, really well on on the defense. But it allows you to to be sustainable for the next four or five years. I'm just really tired of the one-year deals. I'm tired where we go out and like 2017, what do we do? We went out, we got a bunch of guys, one-year deals and things like that. And then you lose all these guys. What do we do last year? We lost all these guys and back we brought a bunch one. of one-year deals. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Just and back then, to square one. It's just Yeah. And then we lose them guys one-year deal. Now we're talking about the Eagles are interested in Justin Simmons. It's like, I'm tired of that route. I, let, let, let's let's make it sustainable, you know. So if, if you want to do that, you, you gotta you gotta do things a little different. You and, trade you you trade for a veteran like that if you're like a piece away or or yeah. you know you you got too many holes in this defense to be trading for a thirty year old that and, and I hate giving away draft I hate giving away draft picks and at least for older players or, or players in general that you can't keep in the building for more than a year or two, barely even that. It's just, I hate doing that. Even yeah. if they're six, seventh rounders, who cares? But they're still draft picks. Right. I mean, still. Well, it just seems like we always get these guys 30 years old. How many of them work out? I mean, the amount of guys that didn't work out that were past the prime is way more than the guys that give you one year or two years. It just seems like like the whole Justice Simmons is like, why are we going out and getting Justice Simmons? Like, that's a trade. Like, I understand that if it's like the season and the trade deadline's coming and you're injured and you need a player, then then do that. But right now in the offseason, when you got guys like C.J. Gardner-Johnson, McKinney, Winsley, when there, there's other safeties out there, let's go that route. I don't, I don't want a bunch of one-year deals again. True. No. Forty one thirty two they ever super check goes trade Davis paired Jones with Carter unstoppable. That'd be interesting. Mm. That would be really interesting. Um I wonder what they would get for for Davis, you know. I think Davis, you know, I, I look at Davis' make or break season. I think this is a make or break for him. Right. You know. I agree. Uh, Joe Vegas says, Howie screwed up hiring the wrong coaches. These coaches did not improve the rookies. Brought confusion in order to see needs. You have to have those young players at the position. Yeah, it's exactly right. 
And the question is, is with the guys that they went out and got this year, are they going to be able to fix it? See, it, worry, it worries me a little bit that, you know, we're talking about a scheme that we've kind of watched the last few years and don't really care for. And you fire the coach that was running that scheme, but then you bring in another coach to run the same scheme that wasn't working. You know, that worries me. Now, but maybe yeah. he will be better. I'm sure he will, but it's still the same scheme that, that caused problems before, no? Yeah, but you're now you're getting the, the the top guy that knows how to run the scheme that has more control in the Eagles organization. So hopefully, you know that helps. It definitely, you know, we're not a fan of the scheme, but like we said the other day. Like at least as long as we get the top guy that knows how to use the players, and there's accountability thing towards it too between the players, and you know he's not going to deal with he's going to get the right players athletically right. for this team because they. Yeah, you know, as of yeah. as of when he was hired, we're like, dude, they don't yeah. have the roster for this scheme no. at all. I, no, and, no, and the thing is, I was just reading something on the whole scheme, right? And they said the most important thing in the scheme is you got to have good linebackers. Well, it's like we're running a scheme; you have to have good linebackers. And then you see what we had at linebacker last year. I mean, what the hell was that? What were the Eagles even thinking last year if the linebackers were that important? It just it didn't seem crazy. like they were that important. No. Basket with Nicobe Dean last year. That's what they did. That he would I know, be but the why? I mean, TJ Edwards left for nothing. You could have kept Dean and TJ Edwards, and you'd probably be okay. Uh, Matt Gonzalez says, "Is Davis a bust?" I don't think Davis is a bust. I I think that his make or break season is this year. But Jordan Davis has shown flashes of being really really good. Mm. He, he he just has to be consistent with it. But I think if he if he doesn't show us anything this year, yeah. The what? The no no no. If no. Jordan Davis doesn't show us anything this year, like in terms of conditioning and being yeah, in enough, then then he's not gonna be there because he should be like as a player, a first round player, he should be so motivated to go out there this year. And I think it's a make or break year for, for Davis. Go Eagle 72 says, uh, Tony Pauline from numerous sources that Sneed has been dealing with a knee injury that prevented him from practicing for long stretches last season. Uh, that that's that that could be a, a worry, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but the thing is, is I, like I know the Eagles are the odds, the Eagles are literally the odds top odds. Sneed. Yeah, I don't think they're going after him. I, I, I don't, I, I honestly think that when I look at Bradbury's contract and and Slay, I don't think they're going to go after him. I think they're going to draft the corner. I think they're going to draft one in the first round, Joey. How mm. about that? Yeah, I mean. Joey's going to be running around in peanut butter, everybody. Peanut no. butter running around. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody, if you don't mind, your you what you said about oh, was it a linebacker or was it, it was line it was linebacker oh, it wasn't linebacker. It? Tell yeah, it was about linebacker. linebacker yeah i said yeah if the eagles draft a linebacker in the first round i'd i'd go outside butt naked in whitey tidies and you know spread peanut butter on myself and roll around in the fucking backyard that's what i would do but i know you it's can not going to imagine happen. when it goes viral yeah, and right. they're saying if philly fan goes crazy oh it'll be great um I, I don't I saw somebody here say Jordan Davis is a bust. I do I don't believe Jordan Davis is a bust. I mean, dude, if you go back to the Buffalo game, if you if you could just go back to the Buffalo game and we talked about the play he made, but if you talk about not only like after that Buffalo game, the week all week was how great Jordan Davis has been this year, how good he has been. It's funny how quickly people forget all those things. I mean, people talk about Jalen Hurts was horrible this past year and all that. You go back to right after that Buffalo game, guess who was the odds to win the MVP? It was Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. So uh, th these guys weren't all bad all year. Jordan Davis wasn't in good enough shape, and he and he fizzled out, you know, and, and he hit a wall, and that was it. They need good coaching. They do. They need everybody. Teams. That's that's why I can't put too much in the Jordan. I mean, yeah, I get it, you know, but the coaching aspect is just, a, the, you know, you don't have a good rotation and – it's hard for me to like take out a player and, and, and say they had a horrible year. And a lot of them didn't, a lot of them hit a, hit a roadblock. A lot of these, a lot of the defensive line, especially right. it wasn't even just Jordan Davis. I mean, 
No, I mean, if you look early on, Jordan Davis in the in the lineup against the run. We, I mean, we we were we were like number one against the the run, <laughs> and it was mainly Jordan Davis, and then it all just collapsed, dude. Mm-hmm. He has got to be in better shape, but but nobody can tell me that he does not have the physical ability to be great. I, I truly believe that he does, but he's got to he's got to have the want and the desire to want to be great. Mm-hmm. And make sure that when he comes in, he's in really good shape. I think he should be about 325, dude. So usually he plays around 340. Yeah. I think he – maybe 325 is too – but I think I think 330, somewhere around there, 325. I think, I think he needs to be about that size, you know. The one thing about Jordan Davis is, like, when early in the year, nobody could block him one-on-one. You, you couldn't block him one-on-one. No. I don't know what the hell Brooklyn Joe's talking about. I tried to like you guys, but I give up when the fudge pack. What the hell are you talking about? Fudge packing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think you mean peanut butter packing. <laughs> yeah, peanut butter. <laughs> we don't care. Dude, I'll talk about it all day if it drives you nuts. Uh, D. Tall says if he gets 312, 15, 325. It would help, I think. I, I, th- I mean, I think three fifteen, he would look like skinny Batman. <laughs> but like, I think, th- I think like three thirty, three twenty five, mm-hmm. three thirty. I think it's, I think it's like, uh, I think that's where he needs to be. You know. I agree. Uh, Corey Davis says Patrick Queen. Yeah. Oh, I would love, I would love to get Patrick Queen, dude. That would be awesome. He'd be the highest three agent. That's be a lot of a lot of suitors for him. Message from Golden Eagle says offensive line with the first pick, cornerback of receiver with two second picks. Interesting. So mm. you're going three picks all offense. And that that I mean that's outside the box. You know, what can I say? You know, that's outside the box. But what would what would your plan then be in free agency? It would have to be heavy defense in free agency. Maybe it'd be easier for them to sign guys defensively in free agency with the money yeah. they have. I don't yeah. know. Well, I think I think that and I think um I, I I look at running back though and I say, man, you know, you look at the running backs in the draft, I don't think I think you got way more talent in free agency. So that that's where I would go with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean we'll we'll see. You know, it's it's going to be interesting. We got 464 people in the chat. Thank nice. you guys so much for being here. Um, if you're new, hit the like. Make sure you subscribe. Click the link if you're on my channel. And so about my man Joey Shakes. Shake us. Yeah. You hear rumors Washington Kamara is going to get Caleb Williams. I heard that they want Caleb Williams. But I think, she, I mean, I don't know what Chicago's. I guess Chicago's going to trade fields for Williams. You know, we'll see. There's so many different scenarios to take place, and we're all just waiting, waiting, waiting for free agency to start. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see what Chicago does with Fields. If they trade him, obviously, then you know they're taking a quarterback. Also, we got the reports that DeAndre Swift is going to wind up in Washington. <sighs> I really I hope that. not. Yeah. What do you all think about Jeff- Justin Jefferson's a stud? Absolute stud and – the Vikings are looking to possibly trade him because they don't want to pay him. Um, I don't know. I mean, he'll end up somewhere and do great. I don't think it would be in Philly, but. They want to move up for a quarterback, but, I mean, they Jordan Addison ain't going to be it over there as the number one yeah. guy, maybe. I don't know. but You have to you have to prove your defensive edge rush, sign Burns, a young draft cornerback linebacker. I love I love the idea of, of that in, in terms of, you're getting two pass rushers because I think you, I think you need to improve your pass rush. And then if you could draft, I really think that if they draft the corner in the first round, those guys could come in and play tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean, Joey? Like you, you're getting a corner, you're drafting. He's playing right away. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, I love the idea of it. And then I would sign a safety and then I would sign one linebacker, at least in free agency that can play. And then I would draft one. I, I, I think it's I think it would be awesome. Yeah. I, I say this, man. I say 
Build this team, but do not do it with a bunch of one-year signings. Of no, guys. no future. You know, make your offense improve your offense so it's 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 got no weaknesses, and that it can carry your defense. And then load up on young talent on defense and let them play. I agree. Uh, Frank Reynolds, says, I keep hearing Howie is on the hot seat, and I make it, and it's a make or break year. Howie's never accountable because uh, everything has been Lori's decision. Think about it; it's the only explanation for Howie. Yeah, I I don't know that I believe Howie's on the hot seat either. I've never seen him be on the hot seat except for when he was put in the boiler room. But in a way, I hope that Howie is on the hot seat because if when Howie gets really aggressive. Things have this team. This team has good years. They, I mean, years aggressive. We we have great years. When's the last time we've seen him be? I mean, when's the last time we've seen him have a lot of money to spend? A lot I of money. Remember. I don't remember a lot, a ton of money, but I remember you know um, going into uh, twenty what, to the year we went to Super Bowl. I mean, Hassan Reddick was Reddick was the big signing. It was like one of the biggest signings of free agency. And yeah. and we were very aggressive that year with getting getting Hassan Reddick, getting CJ Gardner Johnson, right? We got those guys. Um, and I thought they made a big important difference. And we go to the Super Bowl. 2017, you go out, you get all Sean Jeffries, you get Le Garrett Blunt, you trade for Jay Ajay. They did so much defensively, or, or in 2017, uh, you know, also, and boom, you're you win a Super Bowl. The years that Howie has aggressive all seasons, the Eagles move the needle. You know, Joe Vegas says you guys are the best for Philly sports. Period. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank I think you. I think we talked take 2017 in general. Like every free agent they signed was productive. There was, was productive. a one guy. There was a one guy that didn't produce that they signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's been. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be interesting. I, I really think that you got to really wait and see. Like, I feel like this Reddick thing has got to play out. Like, mm -hmm. like what happens with Reddick? You know, I don't like the idea of getting rid of Reddick. I, I, I just don't like it. But if you did get rid of Reddick, then, then what Joe Vegas says, right? You got to go get Burns and mm -hmm. uh, another guy. Right. House Cat says, imagine having arguably the best player you could possibly ask for at this position and you don't want to pay him. I talking about Reddick, right? Is is what I think he's talking about. I it's not necessarily they don't want to pay him like they probably would have kept at the number this year that he wanted, but he wants more money. It's not that they don't want to keep him. Like that this is Hassan Reddick wanting more money and going out and talking to other teams and figuring out what his number is. Right. Um, you know, that's it. Yeah. Uh not another Philly fan says uh we can't let Reddick leave. You don't trade clutch players. We need him to get back to the ball. I agree. I mean, Reddick is legitimately your best uh, playmaker on defense. I mean, he actually changes the game mm -hmm. on defense. You can't. I, I agree. Can't. And I don't think they're going to get rid of him. I think they're going to let him go out, look for a contract, see what he's got. But I don't think anybody's going to give him what they want compensation for. I think at the worst case scenario, Reddick plays in the final year of his contract. I can't. I just can't see it. You know. Let's see. You were talking about JJ. Should have clarified my talking about JJ. Oh, okay, yeah, just oh, got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. You know, I don't know how Minnesota. I mean, I guess I guess what I'm hearing is that Kirk Cousins is going to end up in Atlanta. Yeah, like, that's what I heard. Really earned end up in Atlanta. So they, you know, maybe they go into rebuild mode. I don't know. I mean, what are you going to? What would what would Justin Jefferson even cost? If if AJ Brown was a first and a third, <laughs> Justin Jefferson, the, at least two ones. Do the Vikings want to like are the Vikings looking for more conversation because they want to? They don't have enough draft capital to move up for a quarterback. I think they don't want to pay him that much money. They got no quarterback, and I think they're looking like you know it may be a few years before they're competing again. So well, they don't want to pay him all that money. Where does he end up though? That's the question. The one place you can't, he can't, you can't let him end up in Dallas. I'll tell you that. No. Um, where, who would go after him? You know, that's the question. 
I, you know who, you know who should go after them. I'll tell you who should go after if they can afford it. Kansas City. <laughs> Kansas City will win another two Super Bowls. Yeah, that'd be ridiculous. Yeah, you know, it'd be ridiculous. it'd be ridiculous. But that's that. If I was Kansas City, that's what I would do. But they don't need. But they don't. Kansas City doesn't need any high price receivers. No. They no, they don't. they know how to use. That's why I respect them so much because they could take you know they'll take uh, wide receivers that you know and put them as as you know uh, running backs. They'll they don't need to pay guys like that because they no. they're just they're do every every Kansas City wide receiver that has left has not been successful anywhere no. else. I, but you know I think I mean I think that's the greatness of Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. You know Patrick Mahomes doesn't you know uh, who I forget somebody said to me the other day like uh. Why can't Jalen Hurts win with bad receivers like uh, Patrick Mahomes? And I said, because he's Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is probably one of the only guys that could do it. You know what I mean? Like, like he, he, it doesn't matter. He's just he's that good. Mike says, uh, my guess is, is re-sign Reddick, sign Van Dinkle, <laughs> maybe sign safety, draft the cornerback or edge first round, draft linebacker, alpha the player second. Yeah, I think I think that sounds about right. I think I think that the first round is going to be either cornerback or defensive end. Mm. I, I I think it'll be one you know edge rusher. I think it'll be one of those two positions. I feel like that it's going to be like that even if they go out in free agency and address it. I I, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Um. Steve says Jefferson won't end up in Dallas. They don't have enough footballs to keep them. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, I don't think they would. He would anyways, but I, that's the one place I wouldn't want to see him. Mahomes is 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 a great player, you know. Let's see. Never mind. The Giants have thirty million in cap. They can't get. I don't think Jefferson would want to play. If you're Justin Jefferson, you don't want to go play with no. the Giants. No. <laughs> I like the Giants need a quarterback. They're trying to, Giants are trying to figure out how to trade up for a quarterback. You know, that uh, Giants are going to have to take a few steps back, man. You know, Andy says, thanks for the chat today, guys. Where's McCaffrey projected? He looked smooth and routes are crisp. He definitely be a great third. What I think he's what, like, like a second rounder somewhere. Yeah, there? Probably be a day two. Yeah. Yeah. I think somewhere around there. But man, yeah, there's some there's gonna be some interesting receivers. You know, if the Eagles want to draft a receiver, you know, uh to to replace the third wide receiver, not in the first round, not in the first round, but you know, like second round or something. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh let's see. Big Pickett says the coachings will show up, will show to be missing piece. Team will look so much better. Can't see services have coach. Yeah. I, I think coaching was a big, big problem. It can't get worse. I mean, it really can't get worse. It, it it can't be worse than last year. That's for sure. Oh, God, no. No, it, it can't. It definitely cannot be. John Jones says, uh, that comes from the owner. Jeffrey Lurie gave Howie a pass, meaning it wasn't all Howie's fault when it came to drafting. Yeah, he definitely has given, he's given him multiple passes, you know. But like we talked about, you know, we went through the roster and the cap and and all the guys that are big cap numbers, and they're all guys that are from other teams. And that's because we didn't draft well. How he has to I think he's gotten better, but he's gotta he's he needs he needs a, he needs draft come out of the draft with two or three starters, in my opinion. I think hey, he needs Yeah, of good, course. Yes. You know? Yeah. I, I, you know, get a corner that you could put in right in year one. Boom. Get a linebacker that's going to come in and going to play. Boom. You know, it, it's got to happen. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, we're, we are over two hours in. Mm. Um, we were planning on doing about two hours today. Uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about or anything like that? Yeah. I mean, I think we've covered everything. I mean, the news today, you know, so the next time we're going to be streaming consistently like this will be the draft. This will be the you know we'll have our shakedowns every week. We won't have a shakedown yeah. tonight though. So no shakedown tonight. No. Yeah, no shakedown tonight. So we'll you know next time we do consistent you know three days you know whatever it's going to be a uh, few days it'll be the draft and we'll be uh, we'll be ready for it. So. Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Well, let's do. You want to do like another five minutes and then we'll yeah. we'll, we'll get out of here mm -hmm. so we can get any final questions in or anything like that. I you know. Um, 
it's going to be, it, it, you know, you got to wonder the, with the combine too, because tomorrow the combine ends, and you know, you you've already heard it, but you're going to hear a lot more this coming week of all the conversations that were going on about players to be traded. And there's just so much going on at the combine, not just with these guys working out, but like players, you know, agents talk to coaches and, and different GMs. And so it's going to be interesting to see what develops of that, you know? Um, so I'm, I, I, I think Hassan Reddick is the big, what factor right now? So uh, Reddick's, trainer i guess his personal trainer eagles fan worked out with hassan reddick at the gym today he says hassan told him he wants to stay with the eagles so he said his name is jaron dunn says i'm a personal trainer so we ain't really talked too much about his contract but he said he wants to stay in philly this is from yeah, his I, personal I believe, trainer i believe he, he wants to uh, you know i i believe he definitely wants to um it's going to be a numbers thing but like i said i mean if you're the eagles are you really going to just give up a second round pick for for or just take another second round pick and let him go? See, I don't I don't think the Eagles are going to get enough compensation to make this it worth it. So, mm. you know, maybe they, you know, there's got to be a way they can do an extension with Reddick like 3 years where they can get out of it. You know what I mean? Like what what is there a number like would you pay Reddick like 20 million if he was willing to sign? Yeah. Like yeah, of course. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit. It's going to be between the twenty to twenty-two, twenty-three, probably twenty to twenty-three million. Yeah, see, I would like to to get Reddick to stay, and then I would like to go get Chase Young, and you know, mm. and you have Reddick, Sweat, and Chase Young. Those are your three big pass rushers. Mm. You know, and that's not including what you're going to get from the interior from like Jalen Carter second year. But they're saying, um, they're saying that that. That what's his face? Carter's uh Chase Young is gonna get somewhere around 13 million. I think I mean they they paid they were paying uh Brandon Graham 13 million a couple years ago. I I would do it. It's not a bad him. price. No, for a no. year, it's not a bad price. You know, he, we're not talking about him being your main pass rusher or your number two pass rusher, but like a number three. I think it would be a, a huge upgrade. But you know, we'll see. I really am. I, I really like this whole offense, build the offense, and then go young defensively in the draft and, and let them play. I, I love mm -hmm. that idea so much. But you know, we'll see what the Eagles do. Yeah. You know, they we wanted yeah. we we talked about it last year. That was the plan we wanted last year. You know, if if we had to end up getting Bajan, but then they signed Slay, they brought back Bradbury, and it kind of once they do that, you can't really do it anymore, you know. Yeah. Right. Frank Reynolds, man. Welcome to Tinfoil Dingbats, my man. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you, man. Actually, we're going to be doing a Zoom Tinfoil Dingbats soon. Maybe as early as this week. So look for that. But welcome to Tinfoil Dingbats. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Derek Henry and Swift would be dead. It would be. It would be. I mean, it would be. How do you stop that offense? Seriously. <laughs> you have Swift and Henry. And then you have your passing game, and you have the best offensive line in football. And Hurts can still run, by the way. I think it would create so many problems that, you know, yeah, you might still have holes on defense or you have young players. I think you're scoring 30 points a game, Joey. Uh, yeah, you, with that, you should take pressure off Hurts a lot with that with that backfield, no doubt. Man, it would be nasty. nasty. I think Henry's got at least two more years left. Mm -hmm. And he might take a one-year deal. To show that he's still got something left and he can get a contract, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Tyler Guyton is the Oklahoma right tackle. They are interested in the first round pick by Lane to be his man. And, okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, listen. It, it makes sense you, you, in, in that you're going to need a right tackle. I, as long as long as when it comes to first round, to me the most important thing is. I just, I just gotta have guys that are talented. It's gotta be the most talented player. Yeah, it has to be. You know, a guy we gotta pay attention to this year is Milt Williams. He ended the year. Yeah, I love Milt Williams, Gets and, and he rotates year. in, man. Yeah, he he's a great player. Play inside he, and outside, like you know, he could move around. He was one of the few guys I I felt like didn't quit on the season, you know. Mm -hmm. Him, Devontae Smith, you know, 
They didn't quit. And Mauro Jomo did pretty good at the end of the year, too. He had some tackles at the end of the year. He made some good plays. They gave him a shot, you know. Right. Yeah. I Yeah, he's another guy. I mean, that's why I think, like, I think I think there's a – I don't think Fletcher Cox is coming back. I, I, no, I, I huh? think Kelsey's coming back. I think Brandon Graham probably comes back really cheap. But I, I think Fletcher Cox is gone because you got you got – your Carter and Davis, and then you got Ojomo, and you got Milton. Williams. I think it's, I think it's time, dude. Mm. You know, let go. Time to let go. Yeah, Toryville says I think Ojomo is going to surprise people. He was a great run stuffer in college, and he's athletic. I, I've liked what I've seen from him. You know, I like what I've seen from him. But uh, let me get this here set up. But uh, is there anything else, man? Before we get out of here. No, I think I think we went over everything, like every all the news today, and you know, I've also looking at the running backs today, and you know, what receivers have been amazing. Be so yeah, much coming to the coming weeks. Sorry, there'll be so much to I come like in the, the coming weeks with the receivers. So yeah. it's gonna be nice. Yeah, I I like the receivers we saw. You know, you know, and there's some of these guys are going to be available second, third round. So uh, the Eagles could definitely draft a wide receiver then. Uh, yeah, I'm leaning right now after the combine. I'm leaning towards drafting a corner in the first, as what I think they should do, you know. And, and and I don't mind edge rusher, it's just that from what we're seeing, it's like almost every it's like three, four edge rushers are off the board by 15. So I think, Might be. Move. you know, you could probably move up and get like Mitchell. I mean, I would love that kid, man. I would love him. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be interesting, man. I can't wait for this to, to, to get going. That's for sure. And let me thank everybody that, that joined us today. We really, really appreciate it. Um, shout out to you guys. Make sure you click the link in the uh, description if you're on my side. Go sub up, Joey. Make sure you hit the like on both channels. And, yeah, man, I, I, I guess that's pretty much it. We'll get out of here. Yeah, yeah, Anything I think we're, we're good. All right, cool. So. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us, hanging out with us for a few hours today. Uh, with that said, we are going to go. You guys have a great day, and we're going to let the Cowboys choking take us out. Peace. Peace. Plenty of time. Come on. Oh, oh shit. Dad, oh, no. Dad, it's oh, over. Shit. It's over. This game is over. Cut it off. It's over. Fuck. That's I Congratulations, said. Green Bay. Congratulations, Green Bay. Congratulations, Green Bay. I said run the ball. Congratulations, man. Green Bay. Dak Prescott, you need to be fired today. Mm. That was on you, Dak. That was on you, Dak. That was on you, Dak. I said run the ball. That was man. on Dak Prescott. Trying to feed the ball. Trying to feed the sea lamb. Trying to feed the sea lamb. You trying to feed the sea lamb. You got to give it to C. Lamb! God! It's over! It's over, Dad! Put Trey Lance in the game. Trey Lance can't do worse than you. I'm, a, I'm an idiot because I buy into this shit. I buy into this shit. Because here's the thing I am a grown ass man. And I talk the talk. <sighs> it is killing me. And I, I feel it coming. I feel like it's going to take Jerry Jones taking it. Cut it off. It's over.